This episode of the Smoking Tire Podcast is brought to you by Dylan Optics Sunglasses. You know those amazing sunglasses that I see, that you see me rocking in every video, the ones with the matte finish? Those are Dylan Optics Sunglasses, and I was a customer before they were a sponsor. These glasses are amazing. Not only do they look unique with their matte finish lenses available in a variety of colors, but also their NIR lens technology filters out more harmful UV rays and uh, and keeps your eyes in great working order, whether you work, if you work in tough conditions, if you're like on an oil rig somewhere, you work out in the desert, you're a professional driver of some kind, uh, you need your eyes feeling good all day. And when I'm out in the California sun, these Dylan Optics sunglasses keep me in uh, in good working order. So uh, hit the link in, uh, go to thesmokingtire.com and uh, click that uh, partners banner. And if you buy a pair of Dylan Optics sunglasses using that Dylan link, I will send you a free T-shirt for supporting the people who support the smoking tire. Also, uh, this episode is brought to you by Crown and Caliber. Crown and Caliber is a luxury secondhand watch de- retailer out of Atlanta. Uh, CrownandCaliber.com. They have sponsored us by hooking me up with a new cool watch to wear every month. So check out my Instagram. This month it's the Panerai Luminor Marina 1950. Beautiful watch. Uh, Cameron Weiss and I will be launching our watch podcast called Watch and Listen very shortly in January. Uh, That's it for the ads this week, except for the last one, which is the Smoking Tire Podcast is brought to you by Forza Motorsport, the official racing simulator of the Smoking Tire. With over 700 Forza Vista cars. Forza Vista means all working doors, interiors. They're complete cars. You don't just get a little taste of the car with the driving dynamics. It's a complete car. You can poke around and explore all the way through it. 700 cars with more Ferraris, Lamborghinis, and Porsches than any other racing franchise. You can race on some of your famous favorite famous racetracks such as the Nürburgring and Spa, Road America, Laguna Seca, but also some of their very cool uh, pseudo-fictional tracks, which are tracks that are street circuits made up of, in some cases, real roads throughout the world turned into racetracks. It is great fun. Hit us up, TST Racing on Xbox Live. Uh, Forza Motorsports 7 is available now on Windows 10 and Xbox. Head up, uh, check out xbox.com slash Forza or Forza Motorsports Sport.net for more details. Show? This has an option for drink. Want to do my fucking show? <laughs> my fucking, so just say drink. My fucking yeah. speeding. Is that a drink? Speeding. Hoa. Hey. Hi-yo. 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 Hey. Hey. I can't do it. Spin out. Can you do it? hey There it is. Smoke Entire Podcast. This is where now. We're live. Here's We're in the building. Spinelli's in the Spinelli. building. Man, I can't believe I'm here. Stay in spool, kids. <laughs> that, it says it on his shirt. It says stay in spool. You get it? And it shows a turbo. Get it? <laughs> I, I get it. Get it? I love blip shift. Do you, do you know that I've been on a blip shift buying spree that is unprecedented? Hashtag sponsored. Hashtag ad. Hashtag. <laughs> no. If, hashtag branding. <laughs> hashtag partnerships. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what? Hashtag SCC. I forget right? when I come here, Matt's got like, a, like a, you know, your audience is like a million people. And so it matters. Like my audience. Like what, who's going to. What, what? I'm sorry. Matters? <laughs> Oh, you mean ethics? Ethics matter. Oh, that. But I lost oh. an ear. Oh, here we go. What there, happened? This is better. No, I'm... Vincent, are you okay? <laughs> Did you get that? It's, it's a Van Gogh joke. <laughs> lost oh, an ear. Lost an ear. That's Vincent. very good. Vincent. That's Vincent. Vincent. But Vincent. Vincent. It's because of all the coffee I've had today. Vincent Van mm. Gogh, go and mail that ear. Which Vincent band? Van Gogh and mail that ear? Yeah, the, which name the band. That's a band or a song? It's a lyric. Vincent Van Gogh. That has to be if I this spinal is like tap. A, uh, it's a spinal tap. Oh uh, wow! No, no. How old are you guys? This is like Doug loves movies, where you like just keep old enough to be your man. son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that is true. That's, wait a minute. That's patently untrue. And, no, it's and not. <coughs> you, you are well, you, Zach. You, Zach Zach he's only a year older than me. We could you could make I a kid when you're thirteen. Mad. All right, I, you could have you could have impregnated right. some one of those hot teachers like you see on the news when you yeah. were fourteen. Well, not Mike, and I could be the result Matt, of that. Not Mike. So, <laughs> Matt, what are you talking about? Have you seen you could have been guys? my Mary Kay Latorno. <laughs> That's true. It's not about looks. It's about power. It's not. It is about okay. power. So uh, where the 
Where are we? Oh, wait a minute. No, Beastie Boys. The, the song. Oh, that's Beastie Boys. It's, oh, it's yeah. Vincent Van Gogh oh, going mail that ear. It's from, uh, I forgot which song, but it's uh, on, on Paul's Boutique. If that, you, if you yeah. had set it out... Vincent Van Gogh, go, go mail that, that ear! Yeah, and exactly. all of us said ear at the same time, then I would have been like, oh, it's me. But that's normally right. you know obscure metal bands, so it would be like, oh, you guys don't know, that's like Satan's hairbrush. Like, oh, okay. Do you think when they were forming the Beastie Boys, Mike D and MCA, that just sat down and went, okay, here's how this is going to go. We go round robin, everyone says their line, we all say the last word of every phrase. And they went, yeah, yeah. Yeah, break. That's gold. And then they did that for like 25 years. I think a a lot of rap went that way. It was a good model for, uh, you know, for three guys. I mean, (laughs) you know, for three Jews (laughs) from Brooklyn. (laughs) From Brooklyn. (laughs) At least two of them were Jews? Are they uh, all Jews? I would say all. MCA was definitely a Jew. I think all. Are they all Jews? Adam for sure. Adam, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, no, all three. Because they were they were (laughs) Shadrach, (laughs) Meshach, and Abednego. So that's. (laughs) Well, wait, was, but Michael Diamond, what was his real name? Or was Michael it Michael Diamond? Diamond? Yeah, yeah. That night, that's not a Jewish name. It's, it's not a Michael Jewish Diamond? business. Michael Diamond is That's a, like naming yourself John Jewy. Tax Accountant. It's Jewish. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it could, I mean. Tim, would you mind Googling if the Beastie Boys are I Jewish? I like it's a fighter's name. <laughs> uh, pretty sure like, what's they your, are. Like, they are? Hey, how are you doing? We're forming a rap group. What's your name? The guy's like, Mike Diamond. And like, <laughs> I fucked your sister, so yeah, let me in the group or I'll fucking hit you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Diamond Jim Brady. That, Mike, to see that guy. Is your name Michael Diamond? If, no, my name's Clarence. Like uh, that. Remember that lyric? Yes, I do. Paul's I do. boutique was weird though. They always had like three bangers and then a very psychedelic. Just like here's yeah. a here's an urn. one we wrote on masculine. Yeah, definitely. So was, here's what we wrote on <laughs> masculine. Oh, no. They had, they had, no, they had some slow ones on Paul's. You're like, is this an interlude? Is this the same yeah. CD? It is the same CD. Well, it was the Dust Brothers, right? Came up with all of those those tracks, That's and true. they uh, and they were they were sort of psychedelic you know, remix guys in the back in the day. So that's... They were the old Electronica. Yeah, Electronica. So the Brooklyn Bread Trio is widely considered to be the best Jewish hip-hop act of all time. The only, also. <laughs> <laughs> Modest <laughs> Yahoo, bro. Kind of. Oh, right. No, 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 I'm not saying he's better. No, no, although he's, I, he's, he's I, In some ways, I think he is. He's, he's probably reggae. more Jewish. He's He was more Jewish. He's got more vowels sure. in his name, so that's... And I think he's better at some things. I don't know, man. Beastie Boys, with the exception of a couple songs, never really did it for me, honestly. The couplets, I, I have an aversion to couplets. Well, not everything was a couplet. I mean, well, that there was, was a lot of motherfucking lot. couplets. <laughs> Beginning to the end of the career, their couplet, the couplets spanned it, although I loved Sabotage. Yes. Everyone, yes. I'm 35. Yes. Everyone my age, Sabotage is, was where... With that yeah, video... Okay. That right. video was it? Spike Jones? It was yes, right. Yes, it was. Yeah. yeah. Fuck. I like Eggman. I like uh, Intergalactic. Like I can listen to all those a lot. I have to listen to the 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 big like singles hits. I, I really like, like every album up to Intergalactic. I can't. I didn't get past it. Like the uh, you know the New York one and the what? Nothing. Yeah. I don't know, but I don't, the new, the nothing newer than Sabotage. Well, the Intergalactic That's was 1999, old. right? Yeah. So that was a freaking long time ago yeah. at this point. So that song is so full of couplets, though. <laughs> There's so many goddamn couplets. Yeah, veal couplets. Uh, the the veal couplets and. I mean, uh, okay, guys, I, the I lyric is, "Don't you tell me to," and not. then we all say, "Smile." It's like. A <laughs> oh, you're right. <laughs> That's right. It's like a it's like a church you chorus. Stick around yeah. and make it your wow. Yeah, yeah you're, right, you're right. You're right. Yeah, you're right. That. So that's a lot of Beastie Boys. It is. It's, it's a lot. so much of it. But. Speaking of 1999, when we were on our little walk just now to get coffee, we started talking about the typhoon and because our, our neighbor has an SSR, mm-hmm. and we're like, where did that come from? And then he he was theorizing that maybe the typhoon came from Group Bizzle. Well, Group Bizzle. What? I mean, it, it, you know what. Not exactly. It's not like Chevy had a Group B. I'm not trying to throw in a bus. I'm trying to. Oh, no, no, no. Group Group B. (laughs) I was like, were you trying to say the thing around a gauge cluster again? (laughs) No, then I would have said Beazle. Is that a callback to another podcast? Is the Typhoon a Group B thing? No. Well, no. Okay, not, not not, not directly. Indirectly, maybe twice removed. And hear me out. Put your tin hat foil hat on, kids. Let me bump my tin foil hat on. Um... So, <laughs> so the GM engineers were <laughs> in deep with Group B. <laughs> Who can you could do, Alex Jones? Oh yeah. <laughs> do you do an Alex? Hang Jones? on, let me work myself up a little first. <laughs> Just hold your breath let for twenty five seconds. Clinton's emails for a second. Hang get on. Your, get your face red. 
What was I supposed to yell about again? <laughs> that the typhoon came out of a group being inspired. God damn typhoon! <laughs> I'm going to have to edit that what? peaking later. It's going to be terrible. Was that, was that a bad peak? Sorry. We were losing our, our male essence. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, because, you know, we were talking about the evolution of all-wheel drive in America, right? So it, mm-hmm. was, it was in the, you know, late 70s, early 80s. Subaru was like, oh, what do you need that crap for? Because yeah. the guy down the street with the lifted blazer was what all-wheel right. drive or, or four-wheel drive was before that. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh, okay, now you know, moms and dads had all-wheel drive cars. And then we were trying to think of what was the first performance-oriented all-wheel drive car in America. And I thought it might be was it the Subaru all-wheel X- drive car in America. Subaru XT. What about an AMC? Oh. Well, AMCs, yeah, AMC Eagle. That's not a performance, performance car. That's a Wait, truck. Wait, so how far are we going back? 80s, right? Well, can I just say this? My parents came like a hair's breadth of getting a uh, an AMC Eagle station wagon. And it was only because I really wanted them to get it because... It was. I still want one. So I thought the other day who just reminded me that that new Mercedes portal axle station Johnny. wagon looks exactly like a fucking AMC Eagle. Oh, that's funny. Oh, was that Johnny? No, Johnny. No, but said someone that. reminded me that that, that, that oh, did, man. and I can't unsee it now. It's a hundred percent. So uh, performance all the drive system. I mean, in America, because I mean, the, the Cyclone was ninety one. So right. we got to go pre ninety one. Yeah. So were there any fast Subarus pre ninety one? I mean, no. not fast, no. fast, but there was the eighty. I mean, the XT was like eighty seven, right? What the fuck? That had you all rem- wheel drive in the eighties. That was like a Power Ranger costume on an actor. Well, it looked nothing. like it went a zillion miles an hour. Kind of true. It had I mean, a, a very cool dash cluster, though. Well, R thirty two GTR was eighty nine. Okay, not, though not in America. Well, we're getting right. We're see. We're saying not in America. Yeah. BMW 325xi <gasps> oh, was available was in the 87, 80s. 88. Yeah, 80s. yeah, yeah. That, I think that okay. counts. That's a performance all-wheel drive system to me. I think that counts. I, it, think I don't that think counts. it was intended to be. Out, a I mean, Audi, but it was good. Audi Sorry. Quattro. Well, obviously, Audi, Audi Quattro. Right. So, not so America, what was? Though. Well, what was you the could, first? You could buy Audi Quattros what in America. Was it the GT? Is that all we want? That you can buy in America? That's be performance. Well, you're talking about like American too. made or on, on well, the market in America? On the market in America. It was uh, the Audi. It was Audi. Audi. Audi, Audi 100% yeah. Audi. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The okay. Audi, Audi GT Coupe. Audi GT yeah. Coupe. 5,000. Yeah, wait a minute. 5,000 was such a big car. How about, no. No, I would say maybe Volkswagen Synchro, but those were more like utility off-roady, yeah. not like yeah. rally right. Rally stagey. Wait, when was the Rabbit uh, all-wheel drive? The Gulf Country? Yeah. Yeah. The eighties, late late eighties. I wonder if that was before the three two five. I told Thaddeus actually he should buy a Golf Country, here or in Dubai. Buy one over there in Europe and bring it he, bring it back here. Yeah, cheap, you pull up your cheap. Golf Country picture. Yeah, man. They're 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 still cheap, whereas the Synchros are like expensive. Same with the three series wagons over there. You can yeah. get like four grand and ship them over. Yeah, look at that. Top oh, left, dude. I like, I like the top left. That's, oh. that's what's up. Pull Wasn't that there, up. Was there one of these on the on Bring a Trailer recently? Uh, there's somewhere? always. I see a couple of them. A that's year. a great build. Yeah, yeah. That's but nice. like, st- I, th- I told Dad he should do one of those and then come out with me and my Safari Porsche. Mm-hmm. And we can go on a you trip. Should. You know Are what? You trying I- to like snipe social media on our podcast right now, Mike? Good, we're good photo, Mike. <laughs> yeah, we're I'm doing not, a thing here. Can right. you tell? <laughs> you know what I saw today? Coming up in the rear view, I saw, speaking of safari cars, I was like, whoa, this Subaru is really rally, rowdy. It's like lifted. It's got a bar on top. This is like an overland machine. Guy passes me. It's a Subaru Baja with a lift, and it has two lawnmowers in the back. Oh. It's like Gangster. someone bought it. Yeah, someone bought like a salvage Baja and just used it as a work truck. But on the way toward me, I was like, look at this. This guy must be driving to Peru. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I gotta He's go. Like, no, I am from Peru. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's just where I got here from. Um, shit. So, so how's it going, Spinelli? All right. Okay. Do we have a, Do we have an ending to wherever our direction we were heading down? There, well, or? so I mean, the, 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 we could we could tie a bow on this by uh, talking about the uh, the cyclone, right? So it was the oh, cyclone. Yes. The was cyclone. Did cyclone? It was the, all right. Okay. To me, cyclone was about zero to sixty times. Yes. And it was about beating what was then the lightning. Yes. The lightning oh, came out in like 89. Okay. The GM, the 454 SS was a hunk of shit. It was a dog. Then GM, the, they killed the GNX 
and the Grand National, but they wanted to try to keep it with keep going with the turbo technology, so they stuck it in the truck. Okay, good. Wait, all right, where did they get that diff from? Or the the front, the center, center diff? They, was it a? Board, I think like that's a, a fucking four by four diff. I don't think that is anything special no, at all. It's just some Borg. There's Warner no. Thing. There's nothing special about. The, the four by four wheel drive system in that car. When you drove the crazy one in Nevada. Was that yeah. like a different all wheel drive system, or was that stock? Fuck, I don't remember. I don't. I, 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 I mean, no, I mean honestly, <laughs> no, that was, like, it was like four years ago. Yeah, it was I, a long time ago. I, I mean, it, it. Well, that truck was a manual, mm -hmm. and the the Cyclone never came in a manual. It was all, always automatic only. Okay. So, who the fuck knows what he did? <laughs> If I had to, do you, do you have anything on that? The Jensen, the Jensen FF. Oh, I just saw you pulled that up. Well done, First sir. First performance all-wheel drive system, <laughs> you know, if the Johnny, Jensen if, FF. If Johnny were here, he'd be horrified. There was, he didn't come no, up someone that. was screaming at their, at their iPod yeah. for the last 20 minutes <laughs> that we completely ignored. That car has a great Jensen front FF. fender and then terrible everything else. Oh There's been but the next them, generation one of really them cool. sitting at checkered flag for like two years. How much? Far too much, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's I mean, you want to talk about a car where it's like the market for for that car, there is no market for someone under sixty years old for that car. It just doesn't exist. No. I mean it, it I, arguably, if it were I mean, I, I would I would Probably that would be my seventh car. I think. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. it would be, I, but I don't think it would be less than seventh. I think I could go. Tell probably you what, seven you know it'd be fucking kick ass if you wanted to do some sort of a pro touring type of build. Yeah. Is if you were to take an R32 GTR powertrain and stick it in a fucking <laughs> Jensen Interceptor, that would be exceptional. Because some of the, some of the fronts <laughs> almost look like a, like a Chevelle Malibu, but like a shooting brake. Not that okay. one. Like the the blue one down in the bottom left corner. Like it's just got a little bit of that to it. All right, so Make sure you bring that picture over so everybody can see it. What's the cheapest, worst interceptor body you can get? That's the question. Because that the, are there are there many different ones? I thought they were just all there was a convertible and no, then but there I was mean, that. And I mean, that's it, right? Yeah, but I mean what would it cost to if you found like the barn find that's the it's a complete a, piece of shit. A, a five, five grand, three grand, there two you grand. Go. So that's I mean, not bad <laughs> for <laughs> for something that you have to no. do. Who knows how much to? Well, that you yeah. then take the R thirty two. Were you saying you then, then go find like a hail damaged R thirty two with a body that was completely okay. trashed and you know yeah and you spend a lot of money to you, put it yeah, in or and do you, it yourself. You'd smash your head into a wall for three <laughs> years and then maybe you'd have a car. You send it to B is for build. Yeah, he would he would do it. Yeah, in like a month. Yeah, well, you know, actually, random side. I just seeing a weird, oddball pro touring cars. Do you remember I drove that weird little Honda N six hundred that had the bike motor in it that revved to twelve? Yeah. So the guy who built that, his name is Dean Williams. He was not the guy who owned it, not the guy who brought it to drive. The guy who actually built it. He came out last week with a Volvo P eighteen hundred he built that has a a GM EcoTech. Uh, the turbo motor in it Ooh. with a six speed manual gearbox, like full, and it's like not like crazy fast or anything, but like you know, it's double the stock horsepower, it's like 240 horsepower or something. And it was fucking cool, and like it's that's very cool, it, yeah. And it looks basically stock, a lot more reliable. How did it sound like a Cobalt SS? Okay. <laughs> it wasn't like farty, he made it quiet. That's cool. It, you, you heard a little turbo whoosh, but like overall, it was just like a quiet four cylinder okay it's cool yeah. i don't know why I that. just that picture of that jensen interceptor on the screen over there made me think of this guy's volvo p1800 i mean unfortunately the i love the interceptor just because of what it is but it's not the best looking car look at Pull that, that no. up this guy this guy eleanor uh oh, <laughs> an interceptor. that's as good looking as it gets and it's like i can't what, see a lot of it you know what if you ditch the stripes on that it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be terrible. Uh, there's to me. It's like you got an A pillar, the corner window, then a B. Then it's like there's a lot. There's a lot of pillars going on. Yeah. And window support. It just kind of makes it look strange. If that was all. I bet you that's not the ugliest Jensen Interceptor on the homepage of the Google search results. <laughs> Leave that screen up on for so everyone can look. Let's go back and find the. There's the ugliest. Make sure they can that see gold it. one's bad. Tim, that is Ooh, that. actually see, kind of cool. That one's got like some NASCAR <laughs> shit happening. Oh look, there. it's a 911 Targa. Oh, shots fired. Well, 
I think there's got to be an uglier one there somewhere. It's got stenciled tires, though. <laughs> but it has good NASCAR, like the spray paint stenciled tires. Yeah. If you put all yeah, the windows yeah. down, it's like I a tried Camaro. those glue-on letters that everyone's doing now. Yeah. I don't really like them. No? I, people ever... Because it's the same thing, like they're... Uh, their shtick is that they don't fade like those spray painted stencils. They don't get brown like that and crack. But I actually think the browning and fading is sort of an appeal. Is the appeal? Oh, you want it and to look more. And when they look clean and fresh all the time, it looks like stickers. Yeah, it's yeah. weird. Teach their own. I, I know what you mean. Um, I like anyway. when it looks like old race tires. But yeah, that looks like old race tires. That's cool. So what are you in town for, Spinelli? Car. So I happen to be here for the L.A. Auto Show. Maybe you've heard of it. Uh, I come Try here to every avoid year. It. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, you know, I mean, I'm just here for the parties and the uh, the shrimp. What do you have the shirt still? I don't. I didn't, I didn't bring it, but oh, I have it. He had it made for for an NBC show. It just says I'm here for the shrimp. <laughs> I'm oh, only here for awesome. the shrimp. Awesome. But I found it's the, the whole, perfect event for the shirt, dude. Totally. <laughs> I know. I should have probably done it, but I, you know, the the shirt was amazing because I. I was like, I got to make a shirt like that. And then I went on this stupid online shirt company, whatever the hell it was. Uh, actually, it's a it's a pun on something. Speed shirt? I don't know. Something. <laughs> whatever. It's a pun. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's called a, Crystal Math. <laughs> <laughs> the clearest, in, clear, the clear-headed tutoring for your wow, children. Well done. Um, and I found I found this great clip art of shrimp cocktail. And now most clip, clip art of shrimp cocktail. Is terrible. That's true. I've been saying it for that, years. That is a phrase I just heard. Most clip art of shrimp cocktail is, is terrible. Is terrible, right? One hundred percent. Really? And so I found this great clip art of shrimp cocktail, and I was like, now the shirt just made itself. So that's the. That's what I'm that upset because I've been donating money to Red Cross now for five years, trying to address the clip art shrimp cocktail problem. Mm. Nothing. Yeah. No progress. I'm very no upset. Progress. And yet, countries uh, led by dictators. Have a have abundance. Have an amazing shrimp cocktail. Shrimp cocktail. Lots of the them. shrimp cocktail. The That's trains run on time, and there's shrimp cocktail Cocks. caricatures all over. They're the They're skimming city. off the top. <laughs> yeah, go to any CD-ROM in the coal country, the, and you'll find. Uh, the Berlin Wall was really just a canvas for <laughs> shrimp cocktail. <laughs> so you're, you're going to an auto show that's mostly attended to by or attended by, by journalists, journalists, and you don't bring the shirt that they would get. Uh, well. Yeah, I guess I, I should have. I mean, instead I brought my twelve blip shift shirts and uh, hashtag oh, blip, blip hashtag shift. sponsored That's hashtag <laughs> sp <laughs> hashtag <laughs> hashtag human Instagram branding. In, yeah. Um, but yes, LA Auto Show. Uh, my I don't want to say it's my least favorite show uh, because I like LA and I like being here and I you know um, the weather's great, but it's and the parties are great. So it's got it's it is the shrimp tro- show. Of all car shows, right? It's there's a lot of sales meetings and crap that goes yeah. on. It there's, doesn't have a lot of exotic debut stuff. Like no. we were looking at the list, and it was you know an I8 Roadster. I'm actually kind of stoked for that. The new CLS, like yeah, there's no new Ferrari FXXX or anything. Yeah, yeah. I there mean, is that, a JL Wrangler though. The new Wrangler. That's, that's, <laughs> that's that's one of the the big things. But wouldn't you think that LA would be where you know where AMG did its cars instead of New York? I mean, well, I guess that's why this, the CLS is here. I mean, that's a very popular car in I LA. I guess, but I mean, but like a, New York is the AMG show. Like, shouldn't LA be the AMG? Isn't that because oh, they're in Atlanta now, aren't they? Their yeah. headquarters isn't even there. Maybe I was they'll say switch if it's because it. it's by their headquarters. Well, yeah, I feel like you know why it is. I really feel like LA is the end of the the season. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. people want to buy cars. People are looking at cars. People are, are in the spring. Yeah. And so by a lot of the New York debuts, it's like they are released and, you know, at least for the more consumer-oriented cars, they're then on sale in the summer and they they take pre-orders and whatever. But like, you know, aside from the occasional fucking Lexus with a bow on it, like not a lot of car <laughs> shopping happening in November and December. <laughs> So that's my hypothesis. Matthew, I, I find that uh, to be a very strong hypothesis. I also wonder if, because LA is such a car-centric community, like LA's going to buy them anyway. It doesn't even so matter. Yeah, we if, know. They don't need to sell them to us. If you have in New York, yeah. people are going to fly from overseas to that show, but they're not going to fly to the LA show because it's, it's six hours farther. So That's true. It's so more of an oh, they don't draw. The, you don't think they draw yeah. the European audience? I, I doubt it. Yeah. I saw some chumans yesterday. That's mm. Bill's. I went out uh, for breakfast. And oh my god, it was like fucking crazy Porsche everywhere in the canyons. It was just like full of fucking Porsches. 
but uh, there were some Germans. Uh, you know, you could spot these, these the German Porsche engineers from like so far away. Capri and pants with a sweater. They were driving one of the new Cayennes in a really cool new color that was like this this blue. And there's a picture of it on Spike's Instagram. But um, uh, they were uh, where was I even going with that? I don't know, but they were they were enjoying the canyons in the new Cayenne and asking for directions to the good roads. Ah, the good roads. I hear there's lots of good canyons. Very nice. Uh, yes, was it a uh, like a Porsche company car? Were yeah, they, they were, were driving they like the stuff? new Cayenne. Yeah, it should. Was it up at the top oh, okay. of Instagram just from yesterday? No. Oh, it would have been there now. Check out that AMG GTC. So that's a uh, uh, on the top left there, Timmy. That uh, that is a like a seafoam green paint mm. to sample. That, that's it, it's not coming through on that shot. On the though. picture, it doesn't really work, but that's like a straight teal sea foam green. I don't think yeah. it would work in person. But it was co- it was pretty cool. That's uh, this like woman mo- Diane Warren, who's like oh, a famous songwriter. Oh my god, songwriter. the famous songwriter yeah, wrote yeah, every yeah. song. Yeah, she wrote every. She wrote Bad Boys. She wrote Bad Boys. <laughs> I, st- I stopped boys. reading Wikipedia after I saw that. I was like, she's famous, dude. In the eighties, <laughs> she wrote everything. <laughs> she wrote every mm-hmm. ballad. She like that rock ballad era. Oh, Diane Warren wrote everything. Yeah, like like you look at an Aerosmith album from like. Uh, Did she per- write like I don't want to miss a thing? Uh, yes, shit? totally, totally, hundred percent, hundred percent. No, no doubt. I, I've actually spoken to her like a whole bunch of times without knowing who she was, and then someone was like, she just rolled up in that AMG. I was like, is. Is this woman like a baller and Spike's Holy like, yeah, it's Diane Warren. Dude, I was like, oh fuck me. She's, she's got so pe- nice. She's got a piece of every song. Oh my god, she's so rich. It's not if it's not her, <laughs> it's it's Desmond Child was yeah. the other one, right? Well, there's what was the there was an article that was I think it was on Cracked or something. It was like the four people you've never heard of that own you know ninety percent of the music <laughs> industry, exactly. and it was like her and that Desmond Child. Was, he's the guy with the braids, right? The yes. long braids. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, he and, wrote everything she didn't write. That's like, <laughs> and then there's like this Jewy looking guy, you know, Ira something or other, <laughs> and then there's like a forty year old white lady, right. and collectively they've written every song ever. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. I mean, her 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 output of songs is is just. I mean, hundreds of songs a year. It seems like the, yeah, the people truly behind the music are really entertaining. Like the the people that have written the bat uh, the. Backstreet Boys songs and InSync songs, and it's like they look like three hundred pound like Call of Duty gamers, and it's just Remember, like uh, I wrote this song about getting love in high school <laughs> and having lots of sex. <laughs> or remember like, the video of the I'm guys uh, behind Millie Vanilli. <laughs> Oh, Remember that the guys right. who like actually the people who actually sang "Blame It on the Rain" and it looked like it was like you know a high school play and the faculty <laughs> were singing like the other day. it was amazing because those I mean they looked like but when they when you saw them <coughs> singing that like you went oh yeah 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 that's what you look like when you sing like that yeah. because you have resonance you know you're a large person with you're not like. You know, doing the, yeah. You're not doing the super hair. I don't know. Can you? What Blame is this called? On the is that the Axel? I mean, Axel did it first. So I think. the white guy, like yeah. that's in Hitch. Here's where you live, right here. <laughs> don't get yeah, fancy. Don't get no, 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 no. <laughs> right here. Guilty pleasure. That movie. That's a uh, there's totally. funny lines and fucking. Kevin James, very funny dude. Yeah, yeah. Um, drive anything good recently? Uh, God, have I not driven? Dick, really? You know, it's kind funny. Of fucking automotive journal. Well, wait, I'm, I'm you got more that Fer- Ferrari FFE. Oh, you know, F- F- so mm. all right. So, have you driven the Lusso T yet? No, I'm waiting my turn very, very patiently. But I'm actually excited for it. I hear it's great. You know, it is great. And the problem that that everybody has with it is that it's not a 12, and that of course, you know, the big Ferrari GT has to have a 12. Mm-hmm. Um, the reason they're making it is I don't know what the real reason they're making it is but they they're saying that that, that they can they're going after younger buyers who aren't as tethered to that old Ferrari sure. GT ethos. Yeah. Um are they not I, making a n- two versions of that car one with a 12 and one with an 8? I thought they yes. were. They are, right? Yes. You yeah, can yeah. get the 12 oh, sure. still. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 Older buyers is, uh tend to go for the 12. What's the is the 12 still called the It's the <laughs> FF? It's the G No, 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 no. it's the GTC4 Lusso. Right. But right? And the T at the end is the oh, turbo V. So it's Lusso and Lusso T. Those Lusso are your two. Okay. okay. That's right, what cool. you got. Yeah, so you exactly. drove the T? Drove the T. Um and it is that you know, the, the, the problem is that that engine is so good. It's, it's a 48 so good, motor, right? Or is it a California motor? Uh, it's a California T motor. Yeah, yeah. I mean, That's general, I mean. it's Sorry. like kind of 70, 60 percent, 70 percent of a uh, 
six thirty. So no, no, six oh five. Oh, okay, so it's halfway between the California yeah. T and the forty eight power output. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, God, but great. It revs. It's uh, it, it it wants to rev like you want to rev. Yeah. It. It's like it, it's the it's probably the best turbo V eight ever built. Like that's uh, I think maybe that some, maybe McLaren's could be up there. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I mean McLaren's is a little. I mean they both have. I, mean, the I same. have not had a go in the 720. Everyone says the 720 is really where it's at. But it does not sound. It, it. I would not. I wouldn't call it the best turbo V8 ever just because of the sound. Like, I mean the sound outside the car of the 720 is like. Best you know, sounding turbo V8. That's what I mean. Like AMG? like like the the 570 GT Ooh, no, when you're in it is kind of quiet. And then I remember when I was on the autobahn, Will got on the radio and he's like, "That sounds amazing." And I could hear the exhaust through his radio, and I was like, "Oh, I wish it sounded like that in here." Yeah. yeah. I just drove a fucking Mercy this morning. I drove a gated shifter Mercy this morning, an 03 oh. with an exhaust on it. That in the drive bys was like, yeah, you're crazy. But in the car, you got none of it. Wow. You only got um, induction, induction noise. You got zero exhaust noise. I think that's very Weird. important. Do you hear more in the Luso because the engine's in front of you and you know you're like, like kind of more in the, the soup? The Lu the Luso is disappointingly. Uh, it's not a bad sound. I mean, but because it it revs. You know, it, it revs in the sevens. So like by the time you're up there, it's it's you know you, it, there's some meat to it. Um, but it's not a great it's not a great sound. It's really subdued when you're it's outside muted, of the car. Right? It's muted. Yeah, it's well, got it's the sport like super exhaust. Valved. Yeah. Can you make put it in loud mode all the time or is it throttle dependent? It's it's uh mode dependent. So you can right, but if you drive it around in sport all the time or track. Yeah, yeah. No, no, then, then it's always open? gonna it's always gonna be open. Yeah. Well does it sound good when it's open? I mean, because obviously it's a GT car. I mean, it you want better. to be able to be quiet if you're just cruising. <sighs> I mean the problem is if the twelve didn't exist. If you hadn't ever heard the 12. How much cheaper 12, is it, you know? Uh, 40,000 cheaper. 40,000 is quite a lot of cheaper. <laughs> That's right. I think. Well, it's 10 grand a cylinder. Here's the thing. I think it's for. <laughs> it's right? 10 grand a cylinder. I think it's for women. I think women will buy this. I think women in, you know, where uh, I think probably. it's too big and phallic looking for women. I I mean it I I mean I can't speak for do uh, women big buy, Do women buy big G I mean think about the market think about every Mercedes CL Aston DB9 or Vanquish you know big yeah. GT coupes Right. What percentage of those that you see are driven by women? Tiny, Ooh, small, very oh, like small. A 20th maybe, very, yeah. and even then, the only ones I'm thinking of are SLs and Bentley GTs. Right. I've I mean, I've seen some DB9 occasionally in rare. Aston. Yeah, occasionally. Yeah. Totally. I and it's you know they're definitely not going after women, and they're definitely not talking about going after women. I mean, in any, yeah, not in, not in the way that do a think, lot of other people have been going after women. Do you lately, think this but, affords? Does this afford them some sort of CO2? Some improvement in oh, their overall well, there are a couple cafe of, rating. Or a couple, there are a couple of things, right? So you you don't it, there's road taxes in mm -hmm. places like Ireland and places like uh, uh, you know well well they're displacement based displacement based right yeah. So I mean it's under four liters, right? So in China, the difference between a you know a five liter engine or a six liter what's the the twelve is a six a six right? I believe. So the difference between a six and a three point nine liter turbo is thousands of dollars. In import tax, yeah. So there's that. So for China, it's. I mean, if if you know you have uh, kind well, of. Well, there's. I mean, look. The reality is, if you're a global company selling luxury cars, right. If you don't have a product you could sell in China, you're just stupid, mm -hmm. right? And <laughs> so. and they're, they're making a calculation that more countries are going to go toward a displacement based uh, yeah. road tax. So that means every single year. So if you own that in Ireland. If you own the six liter, it's thousands of dollars a year just to run it. And the and the the V eight is super fast anyway, so yeah. it's not like you're really There's, losing anything. I mean, a, a tenth to sixty. Yeah, I bet. I, would, I bet you on that. There are certain circumstances that the turbo motor feels significantly quicker. Probably. I mean, back right? to back would be I an mean, interesting probably thing. under five thousand RPM. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yes. If you're like in the old, the old merge onto the highway kind of the kind of scoot thing. Yeah. You know, I bet you, I bet you the turbo motor feels great. Mm -hmm. And Ferrari motors and, and Porsche motors and McLaren motors, which are naturally high revving, are particularly adept at blending nicely with yeah. turbochargers. Yeah. Yeah. True. Um, a hundred percent. And that's exact. That's the best thing about this motor. Um, yeah. the, but the other thing is, like, the car itself is so good, right? I mean, it's 
Um, it's it feels edgy. It feels like a like a Ferrari should feel, even at that size. Um, steering is quick. Does uh, it have that super fast steering ratio they all yeah, have now? Yeah, but not in a ba- not in a bad way. It doesn't feel oh, it's not too bad, quick. Yeah. It's like your hands are moving on center because it's it's not you know it doesn't just stop and the, like the world stops when you're going straight. Um, you are you know you're sort of always you're always there a always little bit. there a little bit. Yeah, I I just love that Ferrari thing that they've created as you know just to drive just driving a regular they're, car. They are lovely. They're, they're nice lovely. because like. They're, they're, at least the 488 was so fast, and I drove it for a week, and it was just so easy. Yeah. Like, it was, there was no, it's the only, one of the very few, I mean, I suppose 911 Turbo S as well would be the similar kind of thing where there's li- there's just zero compromise at all. It asks, it asks, like, nothing from you. Right. You just fucking drive it. So yeah. Like, it's crazy that we live in a world where Ferraris work now. <laughs> it's great. That's, it's yeah. like, you know, oh, wow, okay, weed's legal now and Ferraris work. Like, fucking brave new world, right? Who would have known? Shit. Yeah. It's, it's a good time to buy a 458, I might add. Throw that one Is in it? there. Yeah. When the, right when the special edition of the new ones starting to come out, like whenever, whatever the special 480A is going to be, yeah. that's the time to buy an early one of the one beforehand. Oh. Why yeah. do you say that? A it's trick, just the way the curve, the curve down. works. The, the interest yeah. always... Yeah, like people will bail out of their 458s to get into the new one and there will be a glut on the market which oh, will okay. depreciate the prices yeah. and like it sort of happened in a cycle. Yeah, that's interesting. It's fairly predictable. So not the Speciale yet because that's the one. Do you know how much is... money they want for fucking Speciales? Oh my God. Speciales and Apertas, people are asking like seven, eight hundred thousand dollars That's insane, but it's... It, it's you drove of, that thing in Dubai, though. Oh, my God. Have you driven a 488? Uh, just a regular 488. Yeah. Is yeah, a Speciale yeah. twice, the, twice the car no, that a 488 it's, is? It, Don't I, fucking oh. make that face. It's not. Oh. You know it's not. The Aperta is Buy a 48 and take the fucking floor mats out. Here's your special. <laughs> Done. <laughs> no, that... You, but, take out all the carpet. No, I mean, see, now it's aluminum. Take out the carpet, carpet and rev it to 9,500 and then see what happens. I mean, honestly, when that car at, you know, at, at full throttle is... I know is, what you mean. You know what I mean. It's lovely. But I mean, you know what, you know what this, this always makes me think of, though, is especially living here, how many times can you rev a car to 9,500 RPMs? So if you have a car with four, the V8 turbo that you can use the power band a lot more and have, right. you're basically having more fun per dollar and minute than you are when you go, let me get this big straight you know, open road well, and go. I get the appeal, but it, the, 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 the dollar value is not no. appropriately translating I mean, to the experience you're getting. If you're nah. three schmucks uh, doing a TV show on the road to nowhere yeah. on Jebel Jaius and no, there are no other cars on the yeah. road, I, I, yes. Okay, I get it. He I mean, a, he had a good day. It was right. really, really. But really I mean, good but day. You, when you you came back from the forty eight and you were like, "This is amazing. Everything's yeah, yeah, amazing. Yeah. It handles well. The steering yeah, feels yeah. good. It's fast as fuck." Yeah. That's what the special ones used to be, and right. they just everything just keeps getting well, better. Well, the specials are like they're raw and shit. But mm-hmm. the, what the the turbo cars have is that thrust. Yeah. The, the, there's no, you know, I just drove this Merce, which was glorious. I mean, anyone who didn't buy a Merce stick when they were 120 grand four years ago is a fucking moron, including me, because it was the best. But like, you know, you step on it at three grand, and it 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 slowly builds, and like, yeah, it's pulling hard at seven, but like. It's this big 580 horsepower V12, like monster motor. Mm-hmm. And if you're used to the turbo cars at three, you're like, wow. It's yeah. And granted, yeah, you can go down another gear and, you know, you could roll into it from five instead of three. Sure. But like the kind of, you know, 3,500, put your foot to the floor and get that mega shove that's the usability argument i mean ultimately and the mega shove lasts a long time but that's yeah. also that's also a yeah. fun argument it's not just usability it's like what is more fun having yeah. that torque down low from there or waiting 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 payoff wow you know? wow the world has really really changed hasn't it because well, i mean you, honestly no you're right you're absolutely right i mean that's the when you drive a car like that it's exciting and nobody on the internet can tell you that it's not right. That no. it's not more exciting to drive a car with a with a torque curve that starts at your feet. Yeah. The other thing about the Ferrari, that engine is is cool that they do is the graduated boost, right? So you oh the boost by gear, the boost by gear is yeah. real. So you it actually feels like you're it's like a little bit more of that megaphone shaped torque yes. curve. Oh, so cool. it, like it builds the, the like you you get that thrust oh, and then you get this 
exciting kind of does that make each does that make each successive gear feel as fast as the preceding one faster because it's like if you have 15 psi in second and then 18 in third and then 22 in fourth yeah, it eats, I think, it's like it, oh my god it's just as in fast the 48 as fourth. it's like the three four i think where yeah. fourth feels faster than third oh boy yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my you god. have to be going very very quick that is i think, I think that was it the venom gt was really the king oh. of that, <laughs> well, that because it was be, like yeah. oh you got 900 in second and a thousand in third and 1100 and <laughs> fourth and 1200 and fifth and it was like you got that feeling four times in a row and you're like whoa what planet am i on this is some the craziest <laughs> shit ever yeah. wow yeah um well the, the other thing i mean the ferrari this is sort of this is kind of an uh you know an efficiency play and a little bit of the co2 thing but i mean max torque is in sixth gear so you you know it's max torque is in sixth gear sixth gear huh. yeah interesting yeah so if you're in you know so it's sort of it it's a little bit of gaming the test but, yeah yeah but it works for the numbers so mm -hmm. that you know they're that's, just really smart it's great and how much <laughs> is that thing is it 300 it's three oh no sorry two it's god i'm, I'm forgetting the numbers it's I gotta think it's, be over is it 360 three. oh really under starts three. at 260 because oh. it's there's your forty thousand dollar difference yeah so but oh, i bet you nice. it starts at 260 means no one's getting one under three no, no, no. You're, you're spending. You, you paint more. that thing blue, and it's two ninety. I asked that. <laughs> it's funny. I asked that question uh, to the product pr planning guy uh, whether the uh, people were going to spend the margin the on new on mm -hmm. stuff, and like the transaction price will end up being the same. And I don't think he understood the question. <laughs> I asked him like yeah. three times, and he, and or that I that's bet not you, something I that bet they want to They talk would about. get an equivalent amount of options. I don't think you, yeah. I don't think you, I don't think they're spending an extra forty because they saved forty. Well, yeah, they're getting. I don't the, see that happening. They're getting the sixteen thousand dollar panoramic roof though, because that thing is. Is dope. it a biggie? Is it a yes. nice big one? It's really nice. And then the other thing with that car is you you could you could sit in the back seat, and you probably will be sort of comfortable. That's impressive. I'm really comfortable. I really, I gotta get I gotta get get around to Joe again and get that thing on the schedule. Yeah. Yeah, I'd you got I I've honestly truthfully I really would have wanted to have a go. Yeah. Did you drive that is that did you put that picture up of that new uh vantage? Did you drive it or did you just look no, at no, it? No, no, that's March will be uh I think will be the, Did the someone launch. did someone drive it? No one drove it yet, no. So God, they just sent out the, look the so press good, release. It? <laughs> wow. Okay, so this is a good thing to talk about. It's I really want to I really want to talk well, about Tim, can the you looks. get some other pictures so we can see other angles of the uh they put new, out all the 18 2018 Vantage V8 Vantage? Is it 18 or 19? 19. Wow, 19. New, new Aston. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. Just look up New Aston Martin Vantage or something. It's and, uh, uh, that yell. It's that mouth, bro. It's mm. not good. Yeah. It's so I, I went to, I actually saw it uh, last month that's the, in the UK. Uh, yeah. I went to Gaydon. Uh, I got a, pr a preview of it, and it was under embargo until recently. That's like, not month. it. That's that, a concept. That's the DB10. That's not, that's not the correct picture, sir. It's the yellow cars. Yeah. Down, go down. The yellow. The yellow. It's a real car. Yeah. That's yeah, it. There you go. But we need mm. to. Yeah, that's a good picture. It's this mouth. I don't. I mean, I'm sure it has some sort of function uh, from a cooling perspective. Yeah. But. Um, I, all right. Well, so, I would right, say that pretty. I hope it does because, you know, the Civic Type R has a giant mouth, but most of it is blocked off. So right. hopefully, you know. <laughs> I mean, there are a lot Form of things about that. You, let's see that. Yeah. That, that. Oh my God! Mm -hmm. From that angle, it couldn't be uglier. It's really it's such a strange <laughs> car to me because <laughs> that is a Miata with yeah, a an LC500 valence. A yeah. Little bit. Well, from other angles, I would like. To, I, I have liked the way it looked, but sorry, go ahead. That's interesting. Well, no, it's interesting because every angle makes the car look like a different car. And I and I, I know that's the a designer's... Carmen Electra of uh, sports cars. Wow. The sorry. Carmen Electra? Well Every done. Every photograph Carmen Electra is in, she looks like a fucking different person. <laughs> that's true. why I liked her so much. Completely inconsistent <laughs> <laughs> from <laughs> photograph to photograph. Really? Variety craving brain was like... Right? That's why Matt's at that part of the table. That That's a 100% that's right? of the thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay, there you... Right. <laughs> yeah, Sounds good. Well, that's, let the audience enjoy this as well. Some Carmen Electra. See, now she, that, she looks fantastic. So, yeah, she does look fantastic, but she, she looks, looks like a different person in, than, like, say, so many photographs. Yeah. 
Like that's not like that's the same person. Yeah, not the same. You're right. It does not look like the same. <laughs> that's person. eight years later. I hope. <laughs> I hope. You know, I didn't specify. All right, maybe. Trust me, you can play this game at home and just make a Carmen Electra slideshow where it looks like you're looking at fifty <laughs> different chicks. That photo looks like she walked up to a college barbecue in like twenty seven fifteen and was like, "You guys got Bud Light? What's going on?" Like, holy oh, shit! What are you doing here? Tara Reid doing that exact thing where oh. her stomach looked like fuck. It had, oh, oh, Tara Reid. Just found out one of my buddies from high school banged Tara Reid. Actually, really? I'm pretty, I'm, even though it was kind of during that period, I'm still proud. Wait of a minute, like <laughs> Down and Out in Beverly Hills era or later? That's a great reference. Mm. It's more like uh, I don't even know botched American, plastic surgery yeah. era. Oh. Yeah, it's really passed over for American Pie like three pre Sharknado before she crossed over <laughs> into ironic cool. <laughs> Ow. You know, and you started gotcha. her, her sort of comeback. I, I have really, the picture right here. Yeah, it's, it's really. Yeah. So let's so, go back to the, go back to <laughs> the, van, the vantage. Go though. back to the vantage for a second because I want to show uh, I want to show you a couple of different angles that make it look completely different. Right. So that rear three quarter looks good. Um, well, I mean, the rolling front three quarter looks different wow. too. Where where are all the pictures of this car? What, what really did we're you all on Motor Trend. Trend. I know that new Aston uh, Vantage twenty put twenty nineteen. I think we need to teach Tim efficient Googling. Hey, man, you told me. I know I did, but I... But I wait, click, click on Tim, that Tim's one. a camping truck guy. You know? <laughs> he doesn't know how to use the computer. All right, so wait. Do, do that one. All right, so look at this, right? Okay, that looks a gray, certain way. We're talking about driver uh, passenger side profile, 90 degrees. Classic GT car, long, you know, short overhangs, uh, longish nose with a, a kind of a... The standard, it's the rule of standard Aston rule of third shit. Exactly. It's exact rule of third shit. It always is. Okay, now go back to the uh, the Google page. And then front Click on three that quarter. One. What the hell happened? Where did it, it go? Uh, you know what? You're right. It really does look like Where did it go? From the front three quarters, it looks like a different car. And it now really it looks like is a noble. all about someone on, I don't know, Reddit or something, photoshopped the DB11's mouth onto the new Vantage. Right. Much better. Mm -hmm. Much better. Probably doesn't have the, you, the cooling. Can you like Google, uh, I don't know, sh sh Photoshopped nose or photoshopped mouth or something like that. See if you can poke around and find it. It looks, it does look way better. Yeah, I mean, it's really interesting to hear the did, the, yeah. the designers talk about the, the you know the concept, the, the methodology behind the design, because you just sit there and you go, wow, this guy's really serious. But like, like he's not kidding when he he's I, I, and I'm and I'm like. I mean, yeah, I get it. Like he's sort of taking us along on this psychedelic journey. Oh, of, but you mean of, did you ever? You well, go, do you, well, did you ever stop back and think, "Is this pretty? Is that what you mean?" <laughs> or do you mean like that? Well, well, here's the thing, right? So they have he has a, uh, a narrative that he followed, right? And that is that the car is the sports car of the of the of the line, right? What if a bass fish and a transformer? No, but but well, check this out. The car is the. <laughs> <laughs> you know, go ahead. The car is the predator. Now of the Aston Martin line, right? Okay, Matt, Matt's I not fine. If, I'm, if I was see, there, I'm just picturing myself ro looking at you and rolling. Right, <laughs> exactly. Like someone smoke this out loud. The, the car is a predator, so as a predator, its nose is sort of to the ground and it's sniffing for the car in front of it. Right, which is like sniffing a Porsche, its probably. Ass, like, like well, my not, cat does. With no, my it's, it's tracking <laughs> it. It's tracking but, it. It's not, it's not right at its oh, its sorry. its ass yet. It's <laughs> it's it's on the approach. Fuck. So it's so there's a predatory. Um, so that's why the nose design. drops. So why the nose so drops much. somewhat? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Well, there were a couple of other things. Um, like that that he was but but generally like every this line you're looking at a designer said this car needs to be a predator and have a, an analog in nature to the predatory nature of this car okay okay so it? yeah but I that's where they're i mean that's, yeah. that's 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 the concept level and then when it comes down to the execution uh then you get i th if that's the concept the execution does seem to follow that it's just that's the uh, thing. polarizing whether or not people like the concept. I guess here's the other thing: they're gonna sell every one of these. The car looks, I, you know. Here's the, I, 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 I'm gonna stop short at predicting it's gonna be good. Tim, but the I'm sure vantage, dynamically it's gonna be good. I, I honestly have nose. no doubt. See if that just works. because it seems like most cars today are dynamically good, and yeah. if you're a brand like that is built on sports cars. Yeah, they're, and they're using a turbo motor good. now too, right? It's a twin turbo motor it's with AMG, AMG, AMG motor, developed, right? Pretty good. 
I, the old Vantage was awesome and really good looking, but it was yeah. much more subtle. Now is this, a really good time to buy an old one. Oh, V12S man. with a manual with a transformer. A V12 light. or a, or even a V8S with a stick or even an early one for like four, from 40 grand. Yeah. That's, that's a good time to pick one of those up. See, I like the back. That's I like the, the back. That's recorder. one of the best values in in sports oh, cars yeah a, there's a first so, gen vantage they're so good you know the what the that's a good point, angle pull that up yeah. is that a real is that a real car is that a is that a cgi no, that's a real car uh, that's a real car it's a i mean it's a compo- probably a composite shot yeah, but, but i mean like, it's like that's, that's the real that's car. what it looks like right? sure yeah that's, so a that's a great a, angle that, that's the hero that, angle that that's, angle is good that's the crazy thing about this car is the hero angle is it is looks rear. best while you're chasing it around the track <laughs> so you look at it so, with envy as everybody knows the best angle of a jaguar is from back three quarter with its tail in the air while it's hunting because the butt directly up its off is the face of the jaguar <laughs> <laughs> like, i mean really like if the predator thing it's it's just weird that that would be the best looking angle i don't know but the, i mean you're right the, the so the does rear, that make the license plate it's know, asshole I, um, mm, exhaust pipe, really? Wouldn't it be? Or the splitter? Or dual off the rear. The, I am never getting center. An invited to an Aston <laughs> event ever. There's a center uh, pressure outlet for the splitter that you could possibly argue that is the that out- angle. Pull that back up, Tim. That angle is awesome. Yeah, right. That's the, that's it. And, that's and the rear three quarter is the correct angle for that vehicle. The other thing is in person. Uh, it, Mas bien. In, uh, it looks it looks really good, and uh, At, from all angles, or do you? Because you, you two see some Lexus RCF in that picture. Oh, totally, yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah. Lexus in, RCF, on the, right? Yep. Where, where the rear wheel crease meets the door, mm-hmm. it's very Lexus RC. Yeah, and, you know the the rear. I mean, the splitter is really complex. Um, did you see the inside of one? Or yeah, the you? inside is the okay. So that's the best part. <coughs> I think the the new interior is not a clusterfuck it's like you, you know all the things are where they should be ergonomically it's a giant leap forward oh good so I we, wish, weren't, we weren't so kind to the db11 and no the it's a totally film. totally different <laughs> i went and watched that again i was like Oof, we were <laughs> brutal the car's well, not very good the car wasn't very good That's i funny. i i i have a i mean i think it's better than you guys do but the interior is still i little, there's still parts mm, of the interior it's more important for you to stay employed than us i think <laughs> well no are you saying that i'm compromised no, no, no. I know, but you're nicer. Well, I, here's more the thing. diplomatic. Uh, yeah. Fair. Well, there's a fairness doctrine that I, uh, okay. I employ. Yeah, yeah. No, there, there, there are parts of the DB11 interior that I, I can't stand, and and the jewelry bits are, you know, the little the the um, the metal pieces around the, the pe- steering wheel. Oh, you're the pieces. Yeah. yeah. You want to pull that up, Tim? The the uh, the I, that's our RHD, but yeah, the Beazles. The Beazles. Mm-hmm. The Beazles. I really miss Beazle the bub. I miss the gauges. I, I miss, swear no, to right? God. I discussed this last week too on our show. I yeah. just, I mean, we miss the gauges a lot. Totally miss the gauges. Yeah. I I mean I it's I know it's always uncouth to just say I don't like this thing, but specifically like I thought there was a strange combination of materials in the center stack. Like the uh, the HVAC area was like the thin GM plastic, kinda like Cadillac, mm-hmm. where it, it's not really like a good deep black, and then you had gray, silver you know fake aluminum where like the cd changer was but then leather above like it just there's like a lot of different stuff going on mm. and then that pressed carbon that uh i know oh, a lot of people are using carbon which is... you can see just in the center there a little bit oh that was that yeah, is, I, it, the good. stuff looks like a bowling ball i'm not a fan of that i yeah. totally get it if you want if it's cheaper to make carbon that way like i totally get it if you're painting it and using it for body panels yeah. or whatever like that makes all the lambo sense, does like, that that is a horrific decorative material yeah, yeah. it looks it doesn't look good best case scenario which is like the black on black one it still looks terrible yeah right uh but but this is the new interior oh it's way better it's way more i mean granted it has the mercedes uh console knob thing yeah um which is fine it's usable but the rest of it is so much better again i miss the gauges but um, it's well, they, such a better interior. The, they have woven carbon fiber, it seems. Yeah. Someone has learned a lesson. Is that the only picture you can find, Tim? We have a better picture Knee than that. Guards. Knee guard. Nice. Oh, here we go. Yeah, Look at that. I mean, I, I, not my favorite choice of color scheme, but but uh, but that's a that, way better. Is that interior. blue and red, or is that gray, is that a uh, black that's, and red? Uh, black and red. Black and red. Yeah. I really is that like that. Bad. It looks kind of. Cool I like the symmetry me. of the center console. Like yeah. the, the round. It, it almost looks like a separate gauge pod. Yeah. Or bezel. <laughs> I am a I am a fan of yeah, this interior. It's that way, looks nice. It's way good. Yeah, I really wish Aston put their seat controls on the door. They've committed to this mm. center console thing, 
but my leg always hits it, and then when you break, my fucking seat moves forward. Yeah. It's really frustrating. Well, you know, one of the great that things... Looks pretty good. Yeah, one of the greatest things about the Vantage, anyway, the older Vantage, is I always love the, the, the seating position is really nice mm -hmm. and low. Yeah. This feels like it's even lower. It's oh, almost it's like you're on the ground. I, I think low this is going to be good. the best seating. I think this is going to be good. Yeah, I hate it when you are when you're sitting up on top of the car. It yeah, really, that drives me nuts. That this this interior pictures look good. Yeah, this is gonna be one of those cars that you don't care how it's how ugly it is once you're in it. Yeah, and I think you know a different color schemes. Uh, straight up black is gonna be better. It's that that nose boy. Woof. The nose is tricky. I mean those those flush head uh, flush headlamps. Uh, you know everybody's talking about being MX five. To me, it's sort of almost MX6. Do you remember the MX6? MX6, yeah. But, Someone's um, got to get Dr. Mm. Schlotkin in here. <laughs> I wonder how much of that uh, has to do with like the crash standards. Like, yeah, you know, the a Miata lot has it. a big dip in the nose. Yeah, so is that. It. Some pedestrians so, roll gently onto your bonnet. Yes. But, yeah, they, they are deposited <laughs> yeah. onto and the they ground. They splay out like a fainting couch. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but the other thing is also a uh, front front uh, area front uh, frontal area i'm sorry frontal area has to be lower got a nice frontal area gotta it's, a, it's gotta be shorter it's gotta go pick them up below the knees you gotta, you gotta, no but this is for aerodynamics you know what i'm oh. saying you gotta the uh, the frontal area's gotta be a little bit uh so you notice it on the uh, on the mustang the new mustang you notice that that there's this sort of very flaccid sort of soft curve if you look at it on the side it's lifting it's yeah <laughs> they have, it's uh, lifting. were you as a show today or did you just fly in i just flew in oh, it, shows tomorrow shows in two days oh, okay. i flew in real early to have some meetings have you seen the new mustang is there a noticeable difference really I'm, not up close yet i can't really from the photographs i mean like i can be like yeah something's a little different a little but refresh i can't, I can't really tell yet i know we'll see i mean Ooh. i don't know it's probably great it's a good car. Mm -hmm. Most things are good now. Yeah. The, the front end, they, they changed the lights a little bit, like, so oh, it kind of I narrows. drove a crazy time attack Mustang today that was fast as a balls. Had a nice big, big uh, punched out 5.2 liter motor, full downforce and independent Whoa. reservoir shocks. Wow. The gentleman who owned it uh, was in the cannabis business. Oh, hello. It's really nice. Glo ran global time attack on the weekends and uh, slanged legal... Uh, Concentrates. Ben's time during the Concentrates. Week. The yeah. Drift Starion you drove long oh. ago was on Hoonigan. Recently. I know. He, they filmed it right after. He oh, showed really? up when I was, while I was down there. He's very hey, loud. your car was on Hoonigan. Oh, my God, it was. Oh, my God, it was. I was yeah. like, th that was that's cool. All right. So it's a fun little gig. That's that was a, a fun Do you want to talk afternoon? about that? Could you, have you sure. already talked about this? Uh, we, we, I brought it up at one point, but sure, yeah. What's up? No, because I, I saw it. Now, you know, like... Like it's it's funny we 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 live in a very uh, a very small world right? yes so I worked with Scotto yes uh, Scotto hired me to do zero to sixty and then he left to to go with uh, with Kenny Block mm -hmm. and now they have this amazing place the freaking the donut garage the donut garage mm -hmm. and now they have a bunch of degenerates hanging out down there and it's like being degenerates. And, and you're and there you are with your uh, with your Well, Scotto lives right around the corner from me. So I see Scotto yeah. a lot. Um and I love I see those guys at Grid Life. Like I love like Hurt and yeah. Chair Slayer Parsons and uh Forsberg and Turk. Like I know those guys pretty well. Do you go do you go to that turtle bar that they go to Brennan's? To go to? Yeah, Crow Brennan's. Races? Brennan's. Did he, did no, do they go to Brennan's? Go to? Yeah. I don't know. Do what, they? Like, I've never been there. I, the one in Venice? The one, the one time I hung out with Scotto in L.A., we went to Brennan's. We went to Brennan's? <laughs> I, I went to Brennan's a couple times. I think I went to go with you, Timmy, once or twice when, I, when we first moved to L.A. Yeah, we used to go after uh, kickball. Games. Yeah, and my one time ever doing stand-up, I did it there. And I and I did I did too well and psyched myself out of ever doing it again fucking wow. suck but Brent, but uh I did the opposite with sex started <laughs> real bad <laughs> but they got a whole uh, they got a whole fucking thing happening down in yeah, New York, it's which is pretty cool, cool. It's, um, it's pretty cool and you see Ken bought a RS200 oh, how yeah. boss is mm -hmm. that that is amazing yeah. wait was that there when you were it wasn't it there, wasn't when, there, there when I was there no I think it got there like the next day ah. um, but uh yeah no they've they've really figured some things out haven't they they did but no, I mean filming that filming uh, that daily transmission show is fun. It's just a it was like a you know it's like a quick hang. Yeah, it was a quick hang. Yeah. They shot a little B roll and did some burnout. I learned that the uh, the Sport Cup twos are much better at doing burnouts than those original Continentals I had. Oh yeah, and uh, the car does nice burnouts actually. Mm -hmm. You didn't do a jump in there, did you? No, I mean, uh, dude, those guys are like they're real grimy in terms <laughs> of like. They're like just totally comfortable, completely trashing shit and like smashing into walls. Like they don't really give a fuck. And yeah. so I know a lot of people do some really wild shit with their cars, but like 
when you're in there, that's a little ass area. <laughs> and so I was like, I'm going to regret anything I do. Plus, I filmed, there's there's literally an elementary school directly across the street from there. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so they have a, like a deal pretty much with the fire department and everybody. Because obviously, imagine these guys fucking guys show up. They have a little parking lot and a warehouse. Like, imagine how many times cops get called for these fucking guys when they first. So now they've got like an agreement where they can pretty much do anything they want after 3.30 p.m. You know, that once the kids sense. are all gone. Okay. Yeah. So I was there at like 2. You know, so it was sort of like, look, we can, you know, we'll do this one burnout, but like, I don't, we don't want to, you know, push it with these, because the Starian was there too, and he was going to do like, blow his tires off kind of thing or whatever. The car was really loud. Yeah, so, uh, you see BJ Baldwin when he was there? Well, he like, jumped the truck off the fucking the, dock. Yeah. People yeah. do that. I mean, he they're figurated building, they in were there. talking about building a rail and like rail sliding a car down there. I'm like, you guys, I'll come hang out for that, but I'm not trying to do this shit. They were all like, would you do a donut? I'm like, what? So you can get the fucking rev share? Oh, You're right. Come on, homie. Yeah. What do you think this is? This ain't amateur hour. <laughs> I mean, the, the people that do the crazy stuff with the cards are either they have a t huge team sponsorship yeah. or they're pro and they're not going to hit anything. Yeah. You know, or the, maybe they fix it themselves. Yeah. But most people are smart or uh, just can afford to be crazy. But it was fun. Yeah. I like hanging out with those guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're cool. Yeah. I got very lucky, too. That was the day before, like, Thanksgiving. And so it was like... The worst driving day of the year. The year they show that aerial video of <laughs> the, L.A. Every, the ribbon of yeah, so, red and white. And Hannah was like, she was all like, I'm like, I'm going to Long Beach State of the State. She's like, do you remember what day it is? I was like, what, you know, what's going on? She's like, get off the road by 430. <laughs> Just get off the road by 430. And so we finished at like 245. And I drove back to Venice at an insane rate of speed in the Mustang and got and got it put away. And then like an hour later, I saw that video of the 405. Oh yes. <laughs> What uh, someone asked how how you started Jalopnik since we're a, a little bit uh, of the history going backwards. It's funny. I mean, I um, you know, I have to go back to a really boring story to get to that story because it's really not that interesting. What what happened was I was working at a uh, an Internet 1.0 company called Jupiter Research, or started as Jupiter Communications. So we were the guys that uh, in you know kind of predicted things that were going to happen on the internet. You know how many people are going to be buying stuff? Boobs are going to be popular. Boobs, boobs, a lot of boobs. Guys, make sure you get plenty of boobs. <laughs> Let's see. Um, <laughs> I think we're going to see a surge in the popularity of boobs with the internet. Wait, hold on. Let me think about this for a second. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be about boobs uh, and 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 arguments. Boobs and arguments. <laughs> boobs and arguments. And people seem to like cats. I don't cats, know. Cats. Well, a little bit of cats and mostly boobs and arguments. Um, and so uh, I got really tired of that. That company went out of business when when Internet 1.0 crashed. Um, I ended up at IBM for a minute doing market research on hardware, which uh, is the worst fucking job there ever could be. <laughs> well, um, I, hmm, I mean, I it was. Didn't expect that. You ever been a jizz mobber? <laughs> <laughs> Let's be I'm, honest. I've never been a fluffer or a jizz mobber. Um, That's very different <laughs> jobs. <laughs> Well, well the opposite you know ends the same spectrum, really. <laughs> That's right. You're, you're doing, That's what you're doing hardware doing. research, and the guy mopping is like, at least I'm not fluffing. <laughs> <laughs> hardware research. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're the best. All right, so uh, where the fuck was I? Um, yeah, so uh, I was doing Dilbert-level market research stuff, and I came from that. that I mean, I, I was ner nerdy enough about business and, and that shit for a while that I thought it was interesting until I – wasn't right so ended up at ibm needed something to do to get out of it because the company i worked for lost the ibm account um and my you know my future was uncertain and uh i found out that uh nick denton wanted to start a blog about cars and if you remember gawker back then was the one of the first pro blogging companies where like blog blogging was a pro level thing you did for a job um barely and uh and so I found out he wanted to start this thing, and I said, hey, uh, Nick, um, I know a little bit about cars. Cold? And, out of nowhere? Well, I knew those guys a little bit from the internet world in the past, and we had I had started a blog called Lasagna Farm that was... <laughs> Why are we talking about market research? Right. What are you doing? So la Lasagna you Farm... You could have done that story <laughs> and saved so much time for Lasagna Farm. <laughs> I know it this week. I got to do this real quick. Need to know everything about the lasagna, lasagna farm. farm was was just sort of like like uh, shit that we came up with that was sort of like the onion. Uh, 
uh, but but it was sort of more like more of an Italian uh, recipe it was, twist. <laughs> no, it was, it was me. I mean, we, me and a, cu- a couple of guys I worked with uh, sort of came up with dumb things that I don't even know where it's, it is. I, I, I wish I could. I, I had more. I wish we could sort of pull up Lasagna Farm. Where we I turn mean, up the does heat. It still exists? Does <laughs> uh, what happens no, at LasagnaFarm.com? No, there's, it's all gone. I don't know where it is now. Do you want to, should we should we buy you back could, the domain? We could for bu- you? we could see layers of humor lightly baked <laughs> lasagna farm. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's very good. That's, well that's done. very good. But what we would do is come up, <laughs> we'd try to come up with stuff. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> We we would try to come up with Google features. Google search lasagna farm. You get some really nice looking entrees. <laughs> frankly, it's just a nice array of <laughs> Morning Star Farms. They oh, make a oh look, they make a lasagna. They, I know that that mm. ugh. sausage style crumbles. So gross. not sausage. It's sausage style. Yeah, anyway, really so, it was a, so it was a humor site. So it was a humor site. Uh, we came up with a, a, you know some features that we were tr- we were basically trying to get posted on Gawker. Just it was like we would be You were Gawker. Kinja before. We were Kinja before there Kinja, was Kinja, right? right. Um, and now at Drive, you're Kinja after there was Kinja. <laughs> after there was Kinja. Exactly. Just Kinja. So um, you were the fluffer, and, and now, now you're the jizz whopper. <laughs> I've done it all. I've done it all. Um, all the jobs. Anyway, so so that's the yeah. So uh, ended up there. Sent uh, Nick an email. Told him I was from Lasagna Farm and I wanted a job <laughs> writing about cars. Um. And he said, to his credit, I guess, or to my stupidity, he just said, here, go uh, write me two weeks' worth of posts. Oof. Yeah. And so I went off and wrote. a lot of posts. Yeah, because we wanted to have um, a a a backfill Mm -hmm. of of posts. Oh, I thought that was an audition. I thought it was too. Fuck. Well, I wrote one. I wrote a couple of things, and he just he just didn't give a shit. He didn't have anybody in New York to write about cars. He was uninterested in finding anyone either a better or b more qualified or whatever. Was it like a low it was, budget experiment too? So it wasn't like he's going to go. It was have a little auditions. bit. What happened was Gawker wanted more male viewers, so they came up with a, or I readers. Can't possibly, that's the craziest thing to me. To think that anyone would want to increase their male viewership on the internet. To me, my view of the internet is that 98% of everything is guys going, (laughs) (laughs) Boobs. It's funny. (laughs) Boobs and arguments. Um, Boobsandarguments.com. Yeah. I should have known that. Which boobs are better.com. So, but the crazy thing about that was there was, they really did have. The, you know a need for more male stuff so they came up with uh, Kotaku at the same mm-hmm. time you know the video game site um, and a couple of other sites and Deadspin was kind of getting going back then too so uh, I sort of walked in and uh, wrote all these posts and they were like okay we need a name and I went well fuck you know the name naming shit, uh, naming so shit hard, is hard dude. and even harder was that it had to represent a person doing a thing because well, that's what Gawker's thing was back oh, then like so like that was a Gawker right a and Gawker a so de- what is a dead spin well, like a dead beat dead, no no dead spin is before that dead spin is a is a pitch yeah like doesn't, it doesn't spin yeah, it doesn't right? Spin, right what's an IO9 IO9 is uh, I don't remember what that reference is. That was okay. after after I left. They, they their tagline out. is "We come from the future," right? So yeah. it's got to mm. be some like spacey, yeah, it's okay. spacey thing. Or but back then they had a, a gossip site in LA called Defamer. Oh, they yeah. had Kotaku, which is gamer in in Japanese slang, um, and we needed a car version of that. And so we just kind of sat down with a bottle of champagne and did the you know poetry magnets thing and just went all right well what are words that are a suffix make and a col- prefix you yeah. make columns i mean we didn't even we wasn't even that uh that organized we were just calling out things and then someone said jalopy and somebody else said beatnik or and someone said jalopnik and i don't remember i could have been me it could have been uh nick himself or i i th- sort of like to think it was me but i I was so horrified by having to do a site called Jalopnik that... If that wasn't already a thing, if you thought of that name and then wanted to name something that, I would be highly uncertain about what that name would And I was highly, highly uncertain. Like, that name could easily have been a complete piece of shit. Totally. So just might have not worked at all. Well, to Nick's credit, he, he registered it right there, and that was that. He was like, that's the name. 
you nailed it. That's the freaking name. And I was like, oh, no, no, we'll just keep. And I went home. I feel like he had a massage every day at 3 p.m. scheduled. I, it was like, it might have been. like, are you sure you want to hire me? And he's like, I got a thing. And I then he, is it the busy. name, sure. <laughs> That's right. I go home and I panicked. I had like almost a literal panic attack that evening. And I went, I can't write for a site called Jalopnik. How am I going to call anybody on the phone and say I'm from Jalopnik? I was the fluffer at Jupiter Research. <laughs> for the first three months, are you calling from Gawker Media instead of from Jalopnik? I did that a few times. Yeah. And they were like, who? Yeah. I, and and then once they, I said Jalopnik, and they went, oh, why didn't you just say that? Oh, then really? I knew that I, that was a thing. Finally, someone had heard of you there. Right, you exactly. Yeah. So that's why I knew when I... Could Fuck, get starting from shit from scratch is so hard. Yeah, it's hard. It was a, it was oh. quite a lift. I didn't leave my apartment for, you know, I mean, a year. Right now, we're trying to come <laughs> up with this watch podcast, oh. and uh, I don't, I can't think of a name for anything right now. And oh, I made a list of like twenty possible names, and I went to hang out with Cameron to discuss stuff and whatever. And I looked at the names, and I said the first one out loud, and immediately crossed the next five off the list. <laughs> before, and I was like, can't even, I can't even speak those words out loud without, you know, yeah. that's a good test. Sick, though. yeah. Um, naming shit is so hard. Naming shit is hard, and then naming something that weird, yeah. and then going to and and committing actually working it, it and committing yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah, that was. I mean, and so to my credit, I took such a big pay cut that I was like, "Well, boy, I got to make this thing work, or else, you know, like <laughs> it's the end of it's the end of the road for me." That's what we're about to do here with the podcasting. Yeah. Bye uh, bye one takes by cash. Oh, cow. so yeah. Wait Today a minute. was the last shoot. By the way, we were gonna normally we take a break, but we're moving ads to the beginning of the show, and those listening to the show will probably figure that out. Like, I don't need a break. Do you guys want to continue? Should we continue? Sure, keep going. Sure. Yeah. All right. Well, hopefully our computer doesn't crash. It should be fine. Should be. Should be fine. <laughs> normally we take a break. Fuck it. No break today. Joe Rogan style. Right. Um, today was the last one take shoot, and it was the most appropriate last one take shoot for a few <laughs> reasons. One. It rained the whole way up there, which is fine. It just it reminded me that winter is coming. Winter is coming. And last winter, I had six shoot cancellations for rain. It was a nightmare. and just remind, reminded me of what is to come in the winter. So that I scheduled six cars. I had, a, I had some serious shooting the last couple of weeks, like finish strong, all that kind of shit. Scheduled six cars. Three canceled last night, and one was a no show this morning. So after oh. getting up at five, it was only it was down to two cars that I shot. Oh, you're kidding! After driving all the way up there, so the cost the cost profit thing is fucking completely thrown in the way. Yeah. So, however, on the that's the bad news. On the the good end of the spectrum was it was a time attack Mustang that was really nicely set up and fun to drive and fast. There wasn't a soul on the road, and then it was a stick Lambo. Oh, right. Uh, the stick V12 Merce, you yeah. know which. Which is a car that will be remembered much more, much better than when it existed in period. What are those going lovely. for? No, they're back up. Are they back? They up? bottomed out like three, four years ago at like 120 to 140. Oh, that's what and you're now saying, they're yeah. 180 to 225. Wow, the sticks. Yeah, not the least of. I mean, on top of being obviously better to drive than the early paddle shift cars, there's a serious financial advantage to a stick, which is that the clutches, if you like, know how to drive. A stick Merce will do a 40K on a clutch, 50K on a clutch, whereas it's 10K like clockwork in oh. the E-gear cars. Ooh. Oh they launch God. clutches. And oh, by the way, that shit's engine out. Oh. Ooh. Some engine out shit. That is really And in expensive. a Merce, the engine don't come out the bottom. It comes out the top. Oh. So you can imagine what a fucking what is, nightmare What does Ferretti oh say God. that costs? <laughs> oh, a clutch job on a Merce is like 12 to 14K. That's actually not bad because that's what a transmission job costs on the uh, Jag XJR. If Does the it, Mercedes did you did no, you no, blow no, no, the fucking no, no, gearbox? No, no. no, but if oh. I did, I was starting that's, to throw, I was starting to throw codes. So I don't know. Well, this is a little bit of a yeah. I mean, a yeah. transmission for my stupid Lexus was four grand. Let me yeah, tell you yeah. how, yeah, how transmission is a big one. A clutch should not be fifteen thousand dollars. Right, right, right. Not when the car's lunching them every ten k. That's true. It's you just can make the, tires last yeah. longer than a clutch. That shit's crazy. It's the clutch and labor. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, no, I was I was starting to throw some codes. I was throwing a uh, a turbine uh, speed speed sensor code, uh -huh. and I was like. Get the fuck out of here. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. So I I, I asked J, GJ, JG. Oh, yeah. GJ Dixon. GJ Dixon. Yeah. Yeah. yeah GJ. GJ. Yeah. 
at classic uh, car club at classic car club and you know he's a genius and he was he's a mercedes tech so he said oh don't worry about it it's just usually it's like the sensors on the bottom and it gets a little corroded or whatever um and it would only happened after i washed it so i was like oh, okay oh, so when it was wet or damp or something yeah and then it just stopped happening oh. it's like it's like zach's problems they fix themselves yeah sometimes, sometimes they do sometimes, sometimes they, they don't his car's problems sometimes and also his own yep <laughs> yeah, just go away if you ignore it you know why do my balls hurt yeah well, well don't worry about it now why is one this much bigger than that one <laughs> why do i need more pants for other, one of them <laughs> other than your um self-solving check engine codes is that thing all right it's been great you've been driving it yeah i've been driving it i mean i you know i need tires now and they're p0 i, I don't even think i think you don't need fucking p0 no, so i you know need, i you need that, whatever whoever well, is willing to give you tires sir that's right i gotta work do the a angle. story on some tires yeah <laughs> Yes, I think. Wait, do, do, don't we know somebody at Michelin or yes, BFG? lots of people at Michelin. Yeah. Mm, okay, so maybe we'll I'm go finally with I'm finally on the Michelin take. I'm not even. I don't even lie about it. All right. I I can't lie about it, but Michelin sends me tires now. I mean, I have I have those stupid 19 inch. I mean, stupid like the the uh, the BBS Montreals, which Dude, are. Do you need you're, you're, a you're, set of PS4s's on that car, and mm. that thing will be gold? You should. They, yeah. Should, full disclosure, they were free. But the PS4S we put on the SL500 versus whatever the old shitty tires were on there completely helped the ride. What, what were on there before? Continentals? Uh, they had they were like date coded fucking uh, 09. Whatever they were, they immediately came off. I don't remember. They yeah, were just yeah. whatever. Your I wheels want. are 19s though. Yeah. Whoa. I that's know. big for an O. Is that an O2? It's an O2. Yeah, it's, it's big for an O2. Well, that's the 100 package, right? So the uh, one. Yeah, that's where the 100 comes from. Uh, 19 inch. Instead of eighteen, it's, it's the big regular for New York too. It's big for New York. It's big yeah. for pothole New York. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah, and them some expensive ass ribs. They're two piece. Can and you put eighteens on it if you want, or do uh, you, would you even want to? Or? Well, no. I'm thinking. I mean, for I mean, I've been keeping it inside for the winter. So, okay. but I, if I wanted, I should get winter wheels if I want to do that. Yeah, J- Jag drift in the snow. Probably mm-hmm. very fun. Great. Yeah, some power very, steering very thing would break. The car is so good. It really is so good. It's it's so it's so weird. It's set up so weird. It it rolls, but then it's. It's roll moment is fucked. I, I I don't know if it's just that they couldn't get it any better than that back then. <laughs> but I mean, it's but the rest of it is so good. That's like you know what it's like driving like a nine nine three Porsche where it's like yeah. wow this is this is the thirty year old car modernized as best as we could fucking do it. But sooner or later this is gonna have to change you know, completely <laughs> at some point. Yeah. I mean, they built an entirely new platform. They were in in the process of building the O four, which was entirely new. Uh, aluminum That's platform. that all aluminum shit. All aluminum. It's a very nice looking car. Yeah. Oh, your like car right looks size. so It's just, nice. I, I, I was going to give it, so, uh, uh, Jamie Kitman mm-hmm. it has this, you know, Jamie Kitman, writer for uh, Automobile, also um, manager of OK gangster. Go. Yeah, yeah, he's awesome. So, he's got a business now. Wait, manager of OK Go? Yeah. The band? The band. Oh, he's got an entire music okay management Go's business. OK manager? Fuck yeah, dude. When and I find out about these car writers and their other job, he's a lawyer and he does that. That is a very Jamie, outside the box other job for an auto writer. Yeah. Jamie's got a whole music business career outside of his automotive. Uh, how about that? Yeah, go Jamie Kitman. Yeah, but but he now he is. Oh, there you go. Is that your Jaguar? That's a, mm. that's my Jag. Those are good looking wheels, though. Yeah, those so, are very nice. But he's got a um a a uh, a business where he wrangles cars for movies yeah. oh yeah, yeah, yeah and so I'm, i was trying yeah. to get him to and finally he was well he had this thing that he needed and i i, I was going to give him the car and they were going to kind of take it on a casting call but what i found out was i They're needed to make it suck somebody's dick well maybe <laughs> <laughs> that, that car is going to be in a mob movie where someone gets a blowjob well, remember that the... guy who fucked his car on tv and he what if that guy was the harvey weinstein of <laughs> Fucking Honey. all these movie cars. Hey, oh, that guy must hey, love Jack. Turo. Ooh. <laughs> that is, yeah, if you want to have sex with cars. Come on, just come inside for a minute. Just come in, just one minute. One minute, come inside. I don't care. No, no, you don't. No, you could leave any time you want. <laughs> Did you go and cast the car? The car anyway. activates its own OnStar. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was supposed to go this uh, this Tuesday, but what happened was um, my stupid rear tire tread wear was too low, so it didn't pass inspection. Oh no! So now I gotta get that done. So that's why I need the tires before you know. So now Spinelli. I'm. I know. I know. I know. I'm headed towards uh, <laughs> Slickstown. Are you? I'm, I'm, nearing, I'm nearing Slickstown. How? It's, being, wow. it's becoming the winter, Zach. Don't be that guy. 
I'm not. I'm waiting for uh, a friend of ours who has a, some people at Falcon. To, oh, there's a hookup? Yeah, there's a little oh. hookup. Every show, like clockwork, my cell phone rings. Yeah. Hi, sorry, Dad. Mm. Call you back. <laughs> um, yeah, tires are good. Get yourself some tires. Gotta get some tires. Yeah, I just drove up a wet big Tahunga Canyon this morning on Sport Cup 2s. It was nice. Actually, I did a couple, like, you know, full brake tests to see where it was. I, I'm always shocked, you know, with the exception of, like, standing water and select tracks, yeah. how much traction is generally available on a, on a wet surface. Dude, yeah. when I when yeah, yeah. were you in the car too? We rode with Harris around the Nurburgring after it rained, oh, and it yes. was still damp. And I was like, "Isn't this going to be an issue for traction?" He's like, "Not really." I mean, he was going ninety six percent as yeah. fast as dry. It felt like because he's like, once it's shiny looking, it's like the tires, the, the heat and the tires will take care of it. He said, "Yeah, like, well, yeah." Well, well, knowing that track and and there are spots that there are is always traction because of the way that the trees are and the the sun gets to it and it's like you know he's a savant yeah anyway the so. magnetism well, even of a tree. when we were at uh, VIR doing the Camaro ZL1 thing and yeah. fucking Lee when I'm out there with Lee oh, yeah. and he was pretty comfortable by the end he revealed that he was slightly uncomfortable <laughs> but I was very uncomfortable <laughs> and he was going what to me felt like race pace mm. you know in yeah an extremely fast car and it was moving around a lot yeah but he was still in full control i know Fucking and he did the, he did the same thing with the alpha i mean i was real i mean if, if you saw if you've seen the show yeah where you vomited where i vomited that's a funny moment that's a uh, real that's, that's a, a real, real moment real moment there fat fonzie pukes on the side of the road did you um um i haven't really i don't think i've seen you since uh this the the show was like completely done and aired i don't think so you're I right i thought it came out really good yeah it, it, it came out good no. i that that show you mean the that show specifically or the whole drive thing? on mbc sports no not just the part segment where you <laughs> right, Bob, no. i was like yeah that was edited really well <laughs> yeah, yeah they, they cut away at the right they time cut away they at left the right enough. time and then and then it, lee looks at me outside he missed we missed that part on the he show he a, goes he makes a no but he goes he goes i gotta go the brakes are on fire <laughs> <laughs> did they cut that yeah. Yeah. Oh God! Well, it was what? too. It didn't fit. It was like. Oh, no, that's funny though. Yeah, it was I like wish. he goes, "Are you okay? Because I gotta go." Like the, that's funny. You had to jump back in, sick, or did he leave you there? No, no, he left me. Oh, okay. Of, uh, that's I mean, it's side of the track, but yeah, yeah, it was funny. funny. He, but it was like, like the it was the swaying, and that's the control that he that yeah, he's got I know the, what you, the, it's that it's when it really gets loose under braking. Yeah, and it, yeah, and so it's like you're yeah you're going the G's are you're you're being pushed forward and to the side yeah and your vision you're seeing like parallax view and then like it just messes with you anyway no I can fun. definitely see how a few a, a few laps of that could yeah. definitely make but, you uh, no I think the show came out good this year except for the fact that it came out good the, too <laughs> except for the fact that we didn't get to do enough shit together which we did last year we didn't have did we have any segments that were just you and I I don't, I don't even know Italy. if we did. Italy, but they cut it. That was the one where we... Oh, we what, our stupid library <laughs> bit? Stupid, no. Oh, the 18 take <laughs> library bit? The stupid no, library bit. No, but we also had a, an espresso bit in front oh, of that, that yeah. cafe. That it was the bit. A B, it just became B-roll. Yeah, it the espresso in the cafe. Yeah. That was a good... It, filming in Italy is so fucking hard because you cannot get out of lunch in less than like no. two hours. Oh, that's right. yeah. <laughs> we in, ate. That was about a two-hour lunch. Well, in, yeah, in Europe they don't have uh -huh. like we have this middle ground in America that like that they don't really have in Europe. In Europe they legit will like because their gas stations are like more gourmet than ours, so yeah. they'll get a sandwich at a gas station like no problem, and they'll sit at that gas station for like twenty minutes and eat their sandwich <laughs> and have an espresso. But there's that or there's a legit sit down lunch that's two hours. There's right. nothing in between that. We they don't have the deli. Like yeah, we, yeah. they don't have the thing where you go and you get a sandwich and then you either eat in your car or sit outside. Or well, whatever. they have like the grocery store where you can get a sandwich made. Yeah, it's not I a deli. So. Like you, you can go and ask. Like I want you know prosciutto with that cheese and this thing, and they put it on bread for you. Right, but when you're but you know I've when you're it. filming in Europe, like you eat at a lot of gas stations. Yeah, yeah. and so at least once a day, you're like, no, I'm not eating at a gas station <laughs> <True>. this time. <laughs> Because the other two times you are eating at a gas station, and yeah. so you're just like, I want to sit down, but then it, have, it turns into fucking two yeah. hours. And no, remember we got the check at that place, which is outside the Alpha <laughs> Test Track, and yeah. we'd already had a legit four course lunch. We yeah. said no dessert, we want the check, and the guy was like, <gasps> insulted. Are you okay? Yeah. What is yeah, wrong? Was, you know, you, he, he was you, serious. You want some brioche? You want to what, what is on here? You just you can't you talk to anybody about anything before having an espresso. Oh no, you can't do any work without having another espresso. 
No, and, and then like we brought them outside. It's so hard to film there. Well, we had to film. And JF was getting so nervous. Like, he was getting like, you know, we got to get this thing going because we're going to miss our time at the track. And then we were like, can you bring the espressos out there or can we take them? And they were like, no, you can't take them. They have to put them on the tray and then bring them out to you outside on the on the cafe. Yeah, because we got we got to the test track and we we're like, oh, sorry, we're a little bit late. Da, da, da. And they went, oh, that's fine. We've set up coffee and espresso. snacks. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Please come in. We're like, ah, OK, we're all addicted to caffeine oh, now. 30 minutes to do this. <laughs> It's very hard to work. Yeah, it's hard to work there in that country. I mean, and th- and then w- when did we go out for that big Milanese uh, dinner? Oh, you had just flown in. Yeah. So you were oh, like really? not feeling like oh, a giant. Like you yeah. were just so happy to order <laughs> things like, that don't exist in America. Bring things. All you were just things. saying words and what showed up a, like tripe cold beef a, salad. We had a yeah, salad. Dude, I just got off a 14 hour fucking <laughs> lot airlines. The official oh. airline of Poland with a layover in Warsaw. <laughs> And we went straight, and I was served like a tripe salad, and I'm like, "You got me, <laughs> fucking kidding it me was, with this." It was, it uh, was, what, what is it? Cartilage? It was a it was cartilage, tendon. It was, cold tendon. It's cartilage a tendon. Salad. I'm like, it looks tendon. like coleslaw. No, it's, a, it's not a vegetable. It's a tendon. It's, it's the meat oh, salad. It's the part of the animal that holds the delicious parts together. <laughs> oh. But that's Milan, right? They can do yeah. anything with any part of the animal. They're like the Eskimos of Italy. But we no, had two, that <laughs> la- our last meal in Milan was amazing. At the that. Restaurant next to the cathedral. Yeah, that was really that good. place. What well, I think you would left. I left by that. That yeah. restaurant was banging, mm-hmm. and uh, that just, place in that little town uh, at the base of the Alps in Borme- Bormio. Bor- oh, were, Bormio. You guys did the. You guys got there before some of us. Yeah, and you and uh, me and Reed drove four right. hours in the fucking Fiat. Oh, two together. of the biggest guys. I'm six two. Reed is six four. <laughs> yeah, I think he's pretty tall. And we did four four and a half hours. It was oh. from Milan to Borneo in a fucking Fiat 124. And it oh, looked like it was, a Greek bear and a Swede on a date. <laughs> it looked like. That was, and we did. It was four hours. Do you remember that day we had? Do you remember what this day was? This oh, day yeah. entailed. This was what a shoot day is like. And I'm. And again, this is like the fact that we get to do this for work is crazy. But some of these shoot days are gnarly. So we woke up and went to the library, the Alfa yeah. Romeo, like no, the Pirelli. It was the Pirelli, Pirelli Museum. Museum. Yeah, yeah. It's three hours or so in Milan. Easily. The Pirelli Museum. Yeah. Then we drive mm-hmm. to the Alfa Romeo test track, right. which is. West of Milan, I believe, right. by about an hour. So that's about yeah, about an so hour. So we drive and a half. there. Yeah, several espressos. Eat. Some, oh, we shot no. the thing. No, we ate lunch at that we, place. We had took the, forever. Yeah, long lunch. Long lunch took forever. So get out of lunch at like three. We have the Alfa Romeo test track from four to five, I think, yeah. for one hour for my me to do a four C review. So we get to the test track, <laughs> eat, drink six espressos, f- do the four C review. Then me and Reed, so that's, now it's 5 o'clock. We started at 8 a.m. Now me and Reed get in a Fiat and drive four and a half hours. And we stayed, the we stayed and shot 4C B-roll. shot more B-roll. And then we left a few, like an hour and a half behind you. Yeah, like we got my, our our day, my I was in the car driving from like, like 8 a.m. to fucking 9 or 10 p.m. I drove oh, every leg of that of that day. It was so gnarly. It was funny because I drove, you know, it was nighttime and I was driving uh, and looking at the GPS and it's like, you are now on next to Lake Como, <laughs> under the tunnel of Lake Como. And I was like, well, I guess I've been here, but I don't know what it looks like. You know? <laughs> Everyone was like, oh, how was it? They have lights there too. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's amazing because... I went to Lake Como a couple times before I ever actually saw the lake. <laughs> <laughs> Adventure drives this past really? September was the first time I ever got within golf ball distance of the actual Lake. During the daytime, yeah, yeah, we stopped at a restaurant there. But ever, I've driven past it like fucking four times for work. I've never stopped. <laughs> Everyone's like, "It's beautiful." I'm like, "Is it?" The highway goes like this. And then I <laughs> Did you see George Clooney? George Clooney lives there. I, I, no. Yeah. Um, no, what's interesting is that this year uh, and sort of last season also, we shot a lot of things out of order. Two, three seasons ago, like season two, when we, well, what was the season when we drove everywhere and every shoot? was a thousand mile oh drive God. somewhere and that yeah, was yeah, yeah. like germany when we were in the car like i think we put oh that trip where we drove oh, from three. england to fucking monaco yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. that was or, well, really that really one. far but was that where in, else that was inside, season one yeah season one but inside season two inside germany when we me you and Chris, well we did 
Bilsterberg to we went, ended up at Spa. Oh yeah, that was a lot of. That miles. That was the M special. That was season yeah, three. That was a lot of miles. That was a lot. No, that's the no, no. It was, no, it was Germany. The, I had the C sixty three. Yes, and you oh, had okay. the Porsche, and yes. Harris had the M five. And we did one. the we did the spot. That thing. was a million miles too. Yeah, we yeah. there was a, there's been a lot of tr- national parks this year. Oh shit! I mean, national parks like we went from did I fly to Vegas? Where did I? Where did we start? Zan. Vegas. Oh no! No no no! We started. Oh, in Vegas. me and you drove from we here. We drove from L.A. Mm-hmm. I started oh. in L.A. with Zach. L.A. Pahrump, LA. Zion, <laughs> LA to, back oh. to Pahrump. So LA, yeah, to Yosemite. <laughs> and and whoa! And so through Death Valley. Like, but we what? drove. We drove through Death Valley <laughs> to the 395. Slept and then backtracked to go to the Jedi transition oh, and then went God. back on the same road That's and then true. went to Yosemite. Oh yeah, the Dude, Jedi I think transition. I think I think we did fighter jets. Did we do 1,800 miles? In four days on that one, I think. Um, me and you like probably that. did. I think we yeah. did, and we both and then, drove home. Because I, I drove, and then I drove home from Yosemite alone. <laughs> <laughs> it's so it's it gets you live in a car by yourself. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's so crazy the miles that you think about the number of miles. It's Full amazing. Full lap of California. Yeah. And that was the one. I think that was, we drove the most for that episode. Other than yeah. Iceland. I mean, Iceland was. No, we drove more for national more parks. More for national parks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Iceland, I, I, I didn't, well, I don't know about you guys, but I did, th- it was it was only like 500 kilometers the whole time. You it wasn't did more that much. distance. We did more time. Yeah, yeah. Iceland I mean, was awesome. Iceland was so awesome. So glad I got to go to Iceland on someone else's money. It, yeah. Mm-hmm. It was well, so expensive. It's really funny because. You know, I've been hearing. So Chris and I were were in, you know, like jammed up against each other for three days, right? And Chris, it's some of the best moments are Chris's getting on me. Oh, right? yeah, of course, because he's a fucking world class ball buster. Yep. Those are the two plots of the show. The one plot oh, yeah. of the show is me having fun, and the other plot is Chris getting mad at you. That's <laughs> and the, it's that's the entire bit, <laughs> right? And it's fun. It's so funny to me, but I'm starting to see like more comments like how how, how do you let him talk to you that way? And I'm like, because it's. <laughs> I I it's think hilarious. it's funny. It's hilarious. It is funny, and he's pl- and he plays it up on camera. Yeah, and exactly. off camera. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And when the, t- all the, when the time. cameras are off, and when he <laughs> and lands, it's all the time. And when there's it's no really cameras really in the same country exactly. as us. No, it's fun. It's super fun. But I, you know, and it's sort of like I'm thinking, like as you know, from from a TV producer's perspective, maybe it's maybe it's too much because maybe character wise, it's. But I just think the, the more the better. I, I it's think really it's the, fine. I mean, if you fine. if you are uncomf- actually uncomfortable with it. That's no. one thing, but if you're if you think it's funny, then whatever, then yeah. make that the character. I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, that's, shape the that character the thing. however you want. I mean, well, I mean, we did ten hours a day, and that day, oh, that, at least, yeah. that day we were on single track all day was no, was really like, I, I think both of us were going to be sick if we didn't stop at that huge hole in the ground, whatever the hell that was. Um, we would have been sick. Hours and hours and hours of off-roading is, is yeah. brutal. It's brutal. It's very tough. Well, I didn't, I didn't, uh, couldn't really empathize with how wiggly it was in the Raptor because I was in the other truck that had such soft tires. Yeah. So I thought we were just going slowly, undulating, you know, very steady. And then you look at the in car from you guys, and it seriously is like someone's just on the side of each each side of the truck, just pushing it back and forth because yeah. it's because it's suspension. Well, the Roxbury stiff, guys, the Roxbury sort of. guys thing made me laugh because we, oh, we, we cut that we, we tried to what find what the fuck a, is that you know oh, you that. mean the night, the night at the rock? Oh, yeah. <laughs> night at the rocks. Bro. What is love? <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to. Eat, God, we wanted to use that song so bad, but yeah, it was like there's it, thirty thousand yeah. dollars. We, we had to find something that sounded not like it, but sort of was similar. You know, you have to be that extra. No, mine goes. Vanilla ice. That was the. That's a good. That's a deep reference cut. So the Raptor makes you think about like. Like the, not all off roading is equal, you know. Like yeah. there's like rock crawling off roading, there's pre running off roading, there's rally driving off roading, there's sand rails. Like these are like pretty highly yeah. specialized things, and like there will be some crossover. Like you can, you probably could get down that trail in Iceland in a sand rail, but like that's not necessarily yeah. the tool for the job. Totally. So. Those those sidewalls were, were, I mean, were just too stiff for that for doing that. 
yeah. all the time. Yeah. You just die. The there. side those sidewalls are designed to take a rock at sixty, <laughs> yeah. not necessarily to make the ride as smooth for you as possible. As at is lower the suspension, speeds. you know. Yeah. And I would never yeah. have thought of that if I hadn't experienced it because I was yeah. like, because when you had the Raptor, I'm like, well, this is soft let's say quote soft Mm -hmm. but then when you get in those two trucks over these little vibrations that are constantly happening you really notice the difference no the raptor takes big impacts really well the small ones you feel and in fact if you were driving i don't know how much you guys had in the bed but like my raptor if you drove my (laughs) raptor like empty just one person like it rode stiff as shit but if you had like three or four people in it or a bunch of shit in the bed like it actually once it got past that initial starting to use the shock it yeah. it rode better so i don't think we had we had two cases in the back but that was probably a total of 120 pounds yeah you gotta have a little more you gotta have like four or five hundred pounds going on in and the yeah truck. we found out we had a smashed bottle of bourbon in one of the oh. pelican cases <laughs> yeah <laughs> it, it, over, it just vibrated itself to pieces because it was yeah, it was wrapped sucks. in clothing in the foam and yeah. it just like shook and compressed over was, 300 that's true. miles. There was nothing hard. There no. was nothing it could have smashed itself on. Just it was the vibrations. Just, just the vibrations yeah. I bet broke just it apart. the micro cracks for yeah. two days of, of seriously 20 hours of driving total at least. Yeah. And it just. Mental <laughs> note uh, drink your bourbon first, then go off roading. You know, Passenger can drink it. it. Might, because it might break. <laughs> You never know, and we, and we want, of course, the night we found that we were like, "Oh, we have bourbon, excellent." And I don't. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't. you've got tequila, most, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> most, that's right. The like, tequila survived. We were like, we were in the in this one of these, you know, the the huts that you that you stay in when you're out in the middle of nothing in Iceland, and we we're like, okay, we've got a bottle of Patron. <laughs> No. <laughs> now what do we do? All of us. Of course, we. None of us. No one took it uh, after after twelve hours. I think everyone went. You did you? Oh, you I did. did. I did. I remember even Harris. Like he was like. No. I did a little. Yeah, <laughs> I had a, I had a little, but it was it was just because you know me and uh, me and Morningstar had a sampled an assortment of uh, Icelandic pubs across the uh, country. It's it was nice, great. Nice place. We was great. We you stayed mean, in some some totally weird hotels. <laughs> we stayed at the Pirate Hotel. <laughs> Oh yeah, wait. We stayed at a pirate themed hotel that was the weirdest place I have ever so stayed. So pirate pirates or Vikings pirates? Viking Viking pirates. I'm sorry, it was not pirate themed. It was Viking. Good. Tim, pull up a picture of the Viking Hotel in Iceland. I think it's just called Viking Hotel, honestly. Was it weirder than the Madonna Inn? Yep, there it is. That's it, top left. <laughs> and wow. it's got a big Viking beer hall. It's No, the Madonna Inn, you know the Madonna Inn in California? It's I've like heard of it. I've never been there. It's halfway from here to up north. Okay. Maybe not even halfway, but yeah. it's like... It's like walking into some Alice in Wonderland weirdo shit. It is. It, it oh, is. I know the guy that built it. Him and his wife lived there or something. Yeah. It's like there's if, the, if you there's took, the Viking, the drinking hall inside. I, if yeah. you took Quaaludes and someone locked you in a bare room with Play-Doh and like watercolor, <laughs> right, and they're right, like, right. "Go nuts!" Like that's the Madonna Inn. <laughs> right. I know what you mean. That's the inside of the Viking. That's one of the part wow. of the, the, the beer hall. So me and Tom drank uh, beer with the uh, the Viking I, girls. Did you eat like a lamb's head in there? Like I can imagine it's like medieval times. No, we but ate something normal. We, I mean, I literally I think I think it was like a grilled chicken with vegetables. I, here's what I remember about the Viking Hotel's food. It was executed very well. I ate like a grilled chicken with vegetables on the side, and then we got some kind of soup thing. And each Tom and I had two beers each. Okay, and we had roughly the same meal entree soup two beers each it was like 280 dollars <laughs> that's what i remember about it i remember Whoa. sitting in that viking beer hall going what the fuck <laughs> is going on in this country and thank god this isn't my dime we're on the cheapest restaurant uh, of that whole trip was in the airport which does not happen outside yeah. of Iceland. Oh, yeah. no joke oh, well we ate at the hotel right the first night the, first the day food the was the food was actually was i mean for good. hotel food was that was amazing good. yeah it was really good but i mean i think the three of us I think it was, like it was 400 Me, bucks. Spinelli, and JF, it was 400 plus. Wow. Yeah, it was yeah. in a Sheraton. Was it a Sheraton or something? It was a Sheraton. Yeah, so four, that was a nice hotel. Or something. I don't know. That's really how much nice, the really bill awesome was time. on the way to Anglesey last year, and that was six people. Yeah. And, like, and we had like, everyone had like a three course dinner and well, everything. I mean, we had like a bottle of wine. I mean, we had a bottle of wine and we had okay. like I was, salads. I'm, I'm and not shy with that buying. I don't give a fuck. I don't know. What are you going to do? The Viking Hotel, though. So what's funny about the Viking Hotel is. Uh, there were three different hotels I stayed in Iceland. I don't understand this. This is the craziest thing. Where so the the bathroom of the hotel or the, of my room, 
the shower was like one of those like plastic showers like you'd buy at Home Depot. <laughs> Look at that picture. That's like the lobby. Pull that up too. The Viking Hotel. Has that the, guy. Just What's keep, that guy saying? Just keep finding weird Viking Hotel pictures because there's <laughs> they, shit all over this They look place. like they caught that guy and his friend just walked up. Like, hey, Steve. <laughs> What are you doing here? Just the weirdest decoration. <laughs> what a strange expression. So the shower was this elevated plastic shower that's like been installed in the bathroom. Why are right? they working for the seagull? <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. The go ahead. The boss. <laughs> <laughs> the seagull's the boss. The the tray you stand on in the shower, where the drain is, like the floor of the shower. There's no like lip to catch water oh. and it's a rain shower and there's a round curtain over your head and the curtain hangs like this high above the lip and it literally is like dripping water onto a pyramid so half of it goes in half so but i take a shower for like and i'm conscious of what's happening it's so absurd but after like maybe not even like three minutes there's an inch of standing water on the floor of my fucking bathroom. And I'm like <laughs> panicking. It's like going out into my room and I'm like throwing all the towels down and like throwing a pillow down. Look, there's the picture of the bathroom. Look, is that the, sh the shower? Oh my gosh. The shower tray is elevated and there's just a curtain that goes around and the water just drips. Dude, all uh, over that the is a changing room. That is not a shower. But no, but that happens in Germany a lot. All right. <laughs> so fucking Alex crazy. Roy. Here's an Alex Roy story. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> Alex Roy is in, I want to say, I think it might have been Sweden or somewhere between Sweden it's on and Mille Portugal, Mille, right? Between I can't Sweden say, and Portugal. I can't oh. say what it was. It was between Sweden and Portugal, and I can't say which country because I don't actually remember, but he. I wasn't there. He goes there. He's he's doing some on camera bits, and he goes to this this you know the same setup bathroom uh -huh. of of the hotel he was in, but he he's not taking a shower. He's just trying to get the wrinkles out of his suit, <laughs> so he hangs his suit, steams it up, right? steams it up, yeah. right? Puts on the shower. It's the same thing. A little lip or no lip, or and there's just a drain at the bottom of the yeah. whatever the hell it is. He goes out, and I don't know if he's on the phone, he's talking to somebody. He comes back, and... Oh, he fell asleep. Or he fell asleep. I remember this. Oh, God, he, he fell, fell asleep. asleep. He comes back, and there's not that not just an inch of water. Really? There are like three inches oh, of water, no. and the water's pouring down oh, no. into the room below it. Oh, no. <laughs> and he's panicking... <laughs> And like freaking out, and like the 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 hotel guy. It's like a small hotel. It's not like a big chain. He's like, you're, you guys have to have to pay for this. And now they don't have any money. Um, and and he just goes, I just, I just, I'm like, I don't know what to do. Like, what are you gonna do? Like, he, I said, offer him five hundred bucks because that's all he had. And I think he gave him five hundred bucks. And then he, then the guy wanted more. And so I go, Alex. Just get everybody out of the hotel <laughs> and get the hell out of there. And they, he just rounded everybody up and they left. Like Did real that. early in the morning. Yeah, like real Navy super Seal style. Navy SEAL style out of there. That's the, bad. But I mean, the guy, the guy obviously. But what kind was, of shower is this? What kind, what kind of, of establishment is this? Anyway, 500 bucks. Where a shower think? left on its own will destroy a fucking. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like if the drain is clogged and malfunctioning, that's one thing. But if you turn a shower on, and walk away for 15 minutes, and no. your room turns into the River fucking Nile. <laughs> I thought you were going to say the River Phoenix. I don't know. River Phoenix? I don't know why. I was like, that's not a river. Did Alex have a scarf that fell on the drain and plugged it? It oh, must have no. been something okay. like that. Because our apartment in Iceland that we shared with like eight crew members had the same no lip suggestion of a drain and i don't know what the plan is there it's very weird it is weird germany what does do they that do? i don't know it's just i i don't know what what is the point of not having like having a tiny lip or no lip italy it's, has these things where they just put the drain in the middle of the floor of the room, of the, of yeah. the room. i kind of like, like that that's a little luxurious because the whole floor of the room is like water is like a, and it's like an angled in i mean if it's, it's done nice if it's done well yeah, yeah. But, but half the time you and it's not done well because it's italy and they couldn't give two well shits. fuck not that i no of course i have to have, i mean they that's why Ferraris. it's such a miracle. No, that's why it's a miracle that Ferraris work now. That's why. I mean, because <laughs> I've, right. I've interacted with all kinds of Italian-made things, and most of them are terrible. Right. Yeah. And, and yeah. the further south you go, right, the less <laughs> the likely things the are going to work. They give a fuck. Right. The less they give a fuck. The, the better the food is, the worse they give. Right. Advice for buyers of Italian cars: check build dates. Don't ever buy a September built.
Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Back August. Uh, they uh, they take it off, but they're still a little it. rusty in a yeah. September. <laughs> you don't want to buy a Ferrari 355. The oh. September build date, my friend. I never thought of that, but oh, you're right. Oh yeah, you ask Rob Freddy about that oh, one. Oh man, they are toasted mm-hmm. when they come back. They're they're tenderized. They're like Kobe cars beef. built in September have all kinds of problems. <laughs> <laughs> that goes for anything in Italy. It's not. I use Ferrari as an example, but wow. that goes. For I love Italy. the country. I mean, it's my people. By the way, Bourdain mm-hmm. just went to where I was, or well, not me, but my, my people are from. Where are your people where from? Where Asia Ar- Argento and uh, Bourdain went down to southern Italy to the heel of the boot, to Apulia. That's, oh, where, the, that where, you're that's from? where the Spinellis are from. And you know what? It's creepy as fuck. So Why is it creepy as fuck? There's, they do all ki- they, they have this dance that's basically about the tarantula. Everything is about getting bitten by a tarantula. Really? Yeah, yeah. This and explains and a lot. there's this sort of strange <laughs> orgasmic <laughs> dance. I have so many questions. Don't explain you, anything. Well, when you get bitten by a tarantula, right, you are possessed now by the spirit of the tarantula or something like that. And then you have to do this dance with this guy with the with a uh, accordion. And if you're a woman, it means that you have this sort of this kind of passione that has seeped into you from the uh, oh. from the tarantula bit. Trying to say you, that she's a hoe? She's a hoe. She'd become a hoe. And she now hoe. she's got to da- do this weird dance thing to get the hoey stuff hoe out. Right, to get exactly. the hoe out? Get the wow. hoe out. So she's, this is... You gotta get the hoe out. <laughs> so oh I, I mean, if you want to see the entire episode, watch uh, this, CNN. It's on Parts Unknown? It's on Parts Unknown. Oh, okay. The one that was on uh, recently. But. Okay, I gotta I, check I, that anyway, out. Anyway, that's... that kind of like mysticism from It's Italy, crazy. You know? I know. It's But but that's only... That's that back part. It's it's the gypsies that came over the Adriatic. And this is not... This, yeah, this is like... Uh, it's are part, these... Are they Christians as well? Well... Is this separate from Christianity? Well, they, or is this No, a, no, no. They're super, they're, they're super Catholic, but... Oh, they are. But, it, oh, but yet, they're, they were pagan way long like, ago. We're just going to hang on to they, this. So they've got Someone a lot lost of a book so and they went, what, tell us about weird. Catholicism. As the Pope said, when the tarantula bite you, you <laughs> dance to get rid of it. Go to bed, go to bed. <laughs> you go to bed down, child. Yeah. Um, so weird. It's a crazy place. And it's like, that's where Nardo Test Track is. So that's, oh, really? That's, the, oh. that's where the have car you, Have thing. you ever been? No. Would no, you, I'd like what, to go. Do you there. Have, did that make you have interest in going though, or not really? You know, I always wanted to go until I saw that, and now I'm. Not. Well, the tar- no, 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 of that, course. The tarantula thing's not like every Wednesday, right? That's like an <laughs> that's like a tarantula. No, it's festival. almost it's like every Wednesday. I mean, it oh, looks, really? They they this make it look the time like thing. well, him and when when they yeah, I mean, they went to this thing that looked like they was listen, something they did a lot. Listen. You ever worked in TV? Yes, yes, I understand. <laughs> think someone might have considered. <laughs> it's possible. Yeah, it's very possible. Are cons- there tarantulas walking around? Is that part yes. of the festival? Yes, there's. Well, there's a, is there like a migration? Like, remember we went filming the Angeles Forest. We go filming the Angeles Forest, and there's a tarantula migration. Get the August f- migration. Get yeah, the, they're I'm, walking across the road never, and shit. They're you going know, to make, Morning Star's favorite day to film. Never coming here. I missed that shit. Ever again? So happy I missed it. It's, wow. Yeah, Morning Star was so excited to get. I think it was BMW 1M. It was. Yeah, BMW 1M. And he, he was picking up tarantulas and then getting shots of them, like, walking across the hood of the car and stuff. He was, Whoa. like, nope. super into nope, that. Nope, 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 nope. Great nope. big nope. Nope, Great nope, big nope. nope. Yeah, it's He's like really the march of the tarantulas it. every oh, August. And God. they go find mates. And they were just walking mates. across the road yeah. and over the mountains. Other tarantulas, or will they mate with anything? Well, they'll mate with Italian broads, apparently. Apparently so. <laughs> These fucking... No. How long are you sticking around in town for? Uh, I'll be here. I gotta leave uh, Thursday. Normally, I like hanging out for Radwood. No, normally I like staying the 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 second day of the show, um, but I have to get out. Do we have uh, any uh, anything the fans want to know? The fans. Oh, the fans. The fans. Um, We covered uh, some of it. I'm 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 bummed you're not going to be here for Radwood. I know it sucks. I didn't know it was for uh, my birthday party. Where is your birthday? This is the night before Radwood. December 1st uh, is my birthday. Friday. December 1st. Yeah. Ah, you, well, By the time this podcast this. airs, it will have come and gone. Wow. But all of you out there, I'm sure I will have gotten birthday wishes, and thank you. Well, happy birthday if I don't see you. Thanks. 36. I'm going to be... Wow, I'm a, 36. I'm a, yeah, I'm in my late 30s. You're like an 30s. adult. Yeah, yeah. My late 30s. you an adult. Well, and now I'm I'm engaged, so now it's a thing. Oh, right. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah that's a thing, too. Yeah. Wow. Now I'm really a fucking adult. You are an adult, sir. <laughs> yeah. It's all right. We got you got some things. Um, how's your MR2? Oh my God! I meant to talk about this today. Well, now, I, you, now you're you're still here. All right. Um, <laughs> never die. <laughs> it's never to, you're still here. I don't know what to do with it. So I need some ideas. I, I just drove an MR2 that had the two ZZ swap, yeah. which is the Elise motor, right? And I have a know, video coming out very soon with it. Oh, cool! And it is nice. Do you know who used to have one of those? Um, 
Um, wait a minute. <laughs> Who had one of those? We somebody we know had one of those. I don't fucking know. Let me think about. It. Oh, Damon Laverance. Oh, okay. Formerly of okay. Autoblog well, and the, oh, uh, Wired magazine. The dude said it was a cheap swap. Yeah. And the car drove nice. And if your car, I mean, if you're tired of it and want to do something cool, like it seemed like a cool way to spend That's less than less than ten grand all in everything to well, have something fun. So there's an there's an MR2. So you know uh, Tim Stevens from CNET or from Roadshow? Mm, I don't think so. So he Tim Tim has a second gen, right? And he uh, just roundy got roundy one. The roundy one. Yeah, okay. Early 90s, yeah. Yeah. So he just got... There's a... God, I wish I remember. There's a shop in Jersey that does sick uh, motors. I just was in Texas and <gasps> fuck me. I know, I've heard of those the guys The guys down in there. Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'm in a blank. I can't remember uh, either. Are you, you prepared to do... Again, Tim, I need to see my the, who I tagged. I can't talk about this without talking to the guy. Spiderworks? The guys in Texas. No, um, go, go, go down to when I was in Texas with the fer, the turbo Ferrari and shit. It's from a couple weeks ago. There you go. Who did I tag in that? What's the name of the shop? I'm blanking. AA, AT Racing? ATS Racing? ATS Racing. Thank oh. you. ATS, ATS Racing, Racing in Texas. I drove th- two of their cars. Second gen MR2, mm-hmm. 450 wheel horsepower, 850 wheel horsepower. Oh my god! And both the cars had like a bunch of miles on it. The 450 wheel car had, I think, something like 30 or 40 thousand miles on that motor trophy. Wow. And the car was fuck all fast. Wow! Whoa! That seems like a very good thing to build. Yeah. Well, you're gonna look at the video soon, Zach. You'll Are be you editing it? That's true. See, but we, you could get one of them. Well, I can't. I don't. I mean, the the two ZZ is is the obvious swap. There's no three G swap for mine. You no. can't get that in there. No. Uh, you are could you, also sell it and get a car that's cooler <laughs> well, that. Well, that's the other thing. Right, exactly. There's that, too. Am I, are you saying am I committed to the right. concept? Are you I, willing to spend money or work to swap this thing? The problem with the MR2 is it, it is it is a real... It's the Miata for people who can drive. I'm just kidding. Come on. <laughs> that's funny. That's yeah, no one funny. races Miatas. Uh, no, they're just... I, honestly... Um, no, I'm just kidding. It... It's but it is a it is a sadly underdriven platform and everybody who drives one goes oh shit this is the fucking one this is the thing I should have been driving instead of Miata but people didn't buy them so they they cost too much it costs too much to work on them the parts cost too much the aftermarket doesn't look, have the breath look into this motor swap so I'm, the one yeah. I drove was fucking cool man it was yeah. a lot of fun is yours a stick yeah it is it's already a stick That's well it, I mean it's either yeah mine's a stick but it also had that crazy weird oh I drove one of those too it was not good uh, those aren't great no yeah. it's not good it's like a I mean, uh, auto stick it's an auto whatever stick. bullshit it was it's gotta be an automated yeah it was weird thing. as fuck you know what was weird about it 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 had really sluggish upshifts and really fast smooth downshifts oh usually it goes the other way yeah. around Mm-hmm. Like it is, and this was the opposite of That's that. Weird. It was very strange. The manual is the one, but manual two ZZ done. Yeah. Okay, and That's then a some good, like and then idea. like a medium level coilover combination, like a yeah. like a BC Racing or like a something like a, a KW and variant just a, one and a really good alignment. I rate like a yeah. like a street alignment. What's yeah. the nearest place you could drive a car like that in the way it should be driven? Okay, that brings up By another him? problem. See, yeah, because <laughs> I, I don't. That I'm, brings I'm oh no, Bear Mountain. Know. Bear Mountain. Oh yeah, sure, like up north, northern Westchester. You mean like right. around yeah, 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 on streets? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Track wise, the problem is that I need to get a cage for, or I need to get at least a roll. The problem is there's what? a standard roll bar for it that's not oh. SCCA approved because oh. it doesn't have any. You, it doesn't have the stanchions that go and and attach to the frame. Uh, there's a there's a a couple of like custom things that guys do that would either take over the passenger seat and do other stuff, and then it'll be strong enough to actually drive on a track. That's the other problem with it, but it's uh, not a really a track point, car. Like, what's worth? Is it worth it? Like, you I know. know, but it's the car of diminishing returns. So, I mean, no, at a certain point, you're you're talking about you know, get yeah, a Boxster, right, right, whatever, you sure. Know. So then, do I just sort of bring it back to stock and sell it? To your point, just kind of clean w- it up. If you're going to sell it, I wouldn't spend a whole lot of money on yeah, it. Yeah, I, right. I would do whatever you can do for as little money as you can do it for. Yeah, whatever helps sell, sell it, it quickly. Kind of, yeah, yeah, in that kind of condition. I like that. I am. I just. I. I, I would miss it if I sold it. That's but I don't fun. know. It's. A, it's something to consider. If you've got somewhere to keep it where it's not in the way, then it's, that's the thing. It's not something. costing you money. I have. Car, I'm gonna. St- I have cars stashed all over the city now. It's really crazy. Do you? How many cars <laughs> do you have? I thought you, do you have more than two cars. No, I have the. Well, okay. So I've got uh, a Jensen Interceptor. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, really, I only have. 
uh, I'm looking for an, another thing, though. You right want now. another thing? I want another thing. And so mm, I'm. I like I, when people want new things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know what you want. <laughs> Matt just I know what elevator you want. Either. Here's what you want. I, here's what you want, Spinelli. I'm going to save you a Go lot ahead. of money right now. Go ahead. You want a vintage Seiko? Oh, I do want a vintage he was, Seiko. He was almost pulling the trigger on vintage Seikos, but God. he never did it. Yeah, I yeah. didn't. I, I almost Seiko. so I was on Crown and Caliber the other day. Yes, plug them. Plug, plug, Hashtag plug, plug. Hashtag sponsored. Hashtag branding. Um, and because I've been, it's funny that you that should be a, a thing now because I've been going on there. That's where most of my watch. I porning, actually legit do have a deal with them. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, but because I've been too. I've been porning on there for years mm -hmm. and since they've been around since they started advertising on Facebook. They have whatever. a good selection actually. They have some nice watches selection. on that bitch. I wish they had more Hoyers from the seventies. That's my that's sort of my moment right i gotta get like either a montreal or I like can, an uh, make an introduction you can have a request and they can mm. look around and find you one. Oh, that that's would be what neat i have them uh looking out for me for some uh, a thing that i don't even want to say what it is but <laughs> Good idea. i'm not going to say what it is because someone's going to find it and buy it and yeah, yeah that's right off. but uh yeah we could get you into watches okay or are you not a motorcycle guy Okay, so I've were. given it up because oh. I can't do it, can't trust myself. Okay, I told you about that story where I drove back from Santa Barbara. It was forty degrees, and I and it just didn't bring enough gear because <laughs> you, like, you like Jeff Daniels and Jim Carrey and Dumb and Dumber. Exactly. <laughs> I almost I had to drop the bike off at the at the shop in Ventura Boulevard in the valley somewhere, and I just didn't. I can't picture because I, I don't. I'm from New York. I, I don't yeah. get the space of things. Hey, Santa Barbara's here, and L.A., the valley is here somewhere. I get to Thousand Oaks. I think I'm almost there. <laughs> right? Like, I don't know where anything is. I still have another hour or yeah. something mm -hmm. until I get down to uh, what, what Sherman Oaks. Yeah. I think, whatever. Um, and so I just didn't bring enough stuff. So I was I, – so. I, when I got down there, I should have pulled over. I was just being stupid, but I had to get a, I had to get a flight to the Raptor – Moab oh, yeah. watch, right? So this is like I was going oh, Springs. Right. I was going from the nine nine one nine eleven launch in Look Santa Barbara. <laughs> this is like peak auto journalist. So full of shrimp. <laughs> so full of shrimp. Oh. I'm full of shrimp. <laughs> cold shrimp on this cold motorcycle ride. I'm on a, a Moto Guzzi uh a V two racer, oh which was God. the <laughs> <laughs> which was a ama amazing bike. I really enjoyed that. But anyway, so like I'm in like full auto journalist like like you know and Moto Guzzi provided Carmen Electra for you. This is just <laughs> exactly. the ultimate journalist trip. It was the ultimate journalist trip, and I almost died. Yeah. Right. So after that, I went like, if you can't be fucking responsible, you don't get to ride motorcycles. Yo, anymore. I mean, honestly, as a as a de as an example of your lack of responsibility, that's a weak ass story. I thought you were going to say, like, you crashed at 150, You're, and that's why you, who, can't, look like, you, you can't trust yourself to bring no, no, a jacket. Look, that's basically look, what, what you can't trust yourself to do on a motorcycle is don't bring you, a fucking jacket. Don't you think that's worse? I think that's worse. I think if I was was so irresponsible. Yeah, okay. If you can't even if I trust was, yourself if, to bring a jacket, exactly. how could you be expected to that's, not run over <laughs> school children? That was, that's that was what, a little bit of, of a, like I mean. someone in flies business class, and they're like, well, they serve my tea. Hot, warm, but not hot. No, no. And I know when it's hot, it's too no, hot to drink, understand. but I like it to cool. I wore, I was wearing right. a light jacket. It was 40 degrees. Yeah. Like, I almost had This had is the oldest Jewish story, <laughs> I understand, dude. but, like, that's a Jewish, weak I story. I didn't, I didn't put a knee down, uh, you know, on my way up. I fell down a hill. I broke 21 <laughs> bones. I rode in a helicopter. I lived in the hospital for a month. Yeah. That is an irresponsible motorcycle story. Right, but you're you like, see, oh, my nipples were so hard <laughs> against my sweater. But did you did you not ride again after I, that? No, I didn't. No. Okay, so there you go. And now, if if that think bar, about the two that things bar is that set here, him to not do something ever again, and then what causes you to not do <laughs> something ever again. But that bar is here. My bar is just. Let me ask you a question. If you it's went to a here. movie and it was cold, and you forgot your jacket, would you then never go to a movie again? If I almost, if I, <laughs> it has about if the I same to do with my that. mom would can not a, go again. Can a movie kill you? Because <laughs> hypothermia, loves, right, loves people. Ring. Hypothermia. You ever see The Ring? I think so. Oh yeah, it's true. Um, anyway. It's not a great story. Okay. Not like, Fine. So, but anyway, so, so motorcycle. For that silly ass reason, you're not getting a bike. You are Costanza's father. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But no wait a movies. minute. <laughs> all right, all right. Now, but, out of popcorn, 
No movies. <laughs> <laughs> what bike would you say if I were to get back on on motorcycles? What oh, would that like be? Uh, you know, you could do like the Bonneville or the the uh, you know Speed Triple, something like that. Everybody loves yeah. Suzuki Scrambler, Bandits. Right? So I like everything about the Scrambler except the fact that it's made in China. That bugs mm. me, but. Um, I like the there's a there's a Honda CB 1100 now right that looks like oh, the yeah, old one. Um, I like that a lot. I rode that uh, recently. Jack Baruth has one of those. Does he ride really? it. It's a heavy bike. It's heavy, but uh, you know, it's a I, lot of bike. Yeah, Dude, that's 1100. No, no, I'm no. It's I, not a. It's not like a super sport bike. It's like yeah. an 1100 that makes probably like you know 100 and yeah. horsepower. I mean, okay. I like big bikes. I would rather mm. be on a big bike than a small one because I'm not a you know real. Agile what about like a rider. like a like a, a BMW F eight hundred GS? Nice um, you, yes, die on that. The, the Scrambler. No, the no, the, the Adventure Tour, the eight hundred. I can't reach the floor. It's the smaller one. Oh, Not I haven't tried that one. The twelve hundred, I, I believe, one. you probably can't. But can't. You can get a lower suspension on the eight hundred too. Ah, yeah. yeah, show Mike the F eight hundred GS. I, I mean, I like the I like the Scrambler a lot because it's the riding position is mm. perfect. Um, does Ducati have the equivalent of a scrambler, but that's fucking made in Italy instead of China? I think so. Ooh. See, that's nice. Can Pull I? that up, Timmy. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's an F800GS. That's nice. So upsides are it's like light, and it really is like a slightly smaller version of the 1200GS. Mm -hmm. Downsides, it's a parallel twin, so it sounds a little bit like a sewing machine. Besides mm. that, it's a sweet little bike. I like it. I like it. That's a good color right there. Pull that one up, Tim. That's a Ooh. fucking bitch in color. That is I nice. would have one in that color all day. That looks nice. Yeah. Uh, what color is that? Like a green gold? Green? Anyone, can anyone neat. see yeah, it? Yeah, bronzy, uh, bronzy yeah, greeny gold. It's like a bronzy, yeah, it's a bronzy camo bronzy greenish. Bronzy like an olive, olive bronze. Bronzino. I think. It's really nice. Yeah. yeah. Or mean. you could get a scooter. I got my. I love my fucking scooter. I'm on it. I rode all day today. Mike's too oh. much of a badass for too a scooter. Too much of a man. I'm a little yeah. bit too much of a badass too for a scooter. Too much of a man for you a scooter. You can't be from Queens to ride a scooter. Where are you going to ride? Hey, what, what is that thing? Is oh, that what it? about a Grand National? Spinelli Are, and a Grand National. I think I sort of should have one. You I, should. I wanted one back then when it beat me. <laughs> I, I yeah. chipped Grand National, beat the shit out of me. I was in my friend's Trans Am, and it, it was fucking fast. And, and the guys pulled over. It was on Central Avenue in, in Yonkers. Yeah. You know, yeah. right by the old Nathan's. Pull over at Nathan's. I love that Nathan's. I know. They... So so the guy I go what the hell what happened and the guy <laughs> the guy with his par he was wearing parachute pants I mean like right right out of central casting he uh -oh, goes uh oh uh oh he goes I got no 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 he goes no it's not it's not stock he goes I got a little secret weapon under here and I go what 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 are you talking about he goes I got a chip <laughs> that's how long ago this was by the way this when is that like, was like a thing when it, that was the first chip that was the first chip it. that like mega chips I one of the chip companies hyper chips hyper Maybe it was hyperchips. It was one of the the, the 3800 was the first uh the turbo 3800 was the first the first chip that they made. I think it was hyperchips. Hyper or mega Hi mega chip? Hyper mega chip? squirt? Super chips? Super, super chips? I don't think it was super chips. They're British, right? I don't know. I don't know. I, have no idea, a, honestly, I think it was. I, I might have been hyper mega. Who the hell knows? Just like you make a column. Just a real <laughs> word <laughs> and <then> chips. <laughs> exactly. Jalop Nick. Yeah. What um, else we got from Facebook? Yeah. Um, was there anything that came redeeming that came out of the full size cars of the mid seventies? I love my L oh. I love me some LTD, but my first car was a nineteen seventy three Buick Century, and the redeeming quality of that was the size of the back seat. Yeah, bow chicka bow wow. I think. Uh, can you give us a s picture of a 73 Buick Century? I think that four -door, may have been by a the way, four door. Four -door yeah. Was there Not, a two door also? There was a really nice. The, I really liked the two door. I wanted the GS. There was a, a sort I of think Adam era. Ferrara rolled up to lunch in Malibu in the two door version of that. Oh, he should. If yeah, I didn't. Oh, yeah, oh no, 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 that. not that. That's, that's not it. No, no, that's not. That's not that's a, a century. Lesabre. That's a Lesabre, oh, yeah. Where's the century? century? That the front of the Lesabre. Oh, is that it? No, 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 no that's a Lesabre. That's a Lesabre. Lesabre. That's a two door. Ooh. Okay, yeah, that's yeah, a that's two door. That's definitely what Adam Ferrar rolled up to breakfast in. Wow, a Buick Century. They did a GS version that's really nice. Um, it, was, it was big. There was a dude in high school in our muscle car club who had an LTD, and it you was had a faster. muscle car club in yeah. high school. What? We did. I did too. At a Mustang club with Larry. Well, with Larry, you you and Larry started it. Right? Yeah. Well, there was like six of us, but yeah, me and Larry. We had no. We had, wow. That's you guys crazy. had the mob. You had clubs. That's right. We had the mob. Yeah, that was our club. Our club beats the shit out of people and makes money. 
Um, we take we take football bets. What, what do you call that club? <laughs> the football bet club. Just yeah, well, that, like that, that, that would be a that's good awesome. bar for you. Spinelli. That was it. And what? I had I had Steelies and, I, and those dopey nice. little cups. I had that's exactly what I had, except it was blue and it was three on the tree. Oh, have we never it? talked about this? About your century? No, I don't. Yeah, think we three have. on the tree and uh, the the linkage would jam, and I took it apart and put it back together like three times, and it, I could never get it. To, to actually work because it was this sort of weird thing that came down to the side of the transmission. Yeah. It was like that Saginaw three speed, whatever. And um, was it Sag? Yeah, one of the, it was like, name a city in Michigan. Muncie. <laughs> no, because oh, Muncie, Muncie was the good one. Yeah. Uh, uh, I want to say Saginaw. I think Kalamazoo. It was, <laughs> it was the Kalamazoo three speed. Um, <laughs> Grand and, Rapids. <laughs> uh, the Go Grand, Grand Rapids uh, Hydro. Ann Arbor. <laughs> um, Anyway, so it it kept doing that, and finally, I I got a guy to put uh, a Hearst shifter on top, and he had to cut a hole. A Hearst shifter through the floor. Through the floor. Oh, okay. So they would literally they would change it from a. Is there a like? No, he had to do a custom (laughs) sort of some weird custom. I like that picture. Oh, there you go. That's That's where you should be going. That's where we. Yeah. So you had a you had a three speed. Three speed floor shift. Three speed floor shifter. Right. Weird. Crazy. Very yeah. Weird. Weird. Yeah. Shifting was it an H pattern when weird. you convert it? Was it a one, two, three? Uh, yeah. Wow. Where was? No. Was was it a? Couldn't a have been dog a dog leg. leg. Yeah. Could have. Because if it was the first, on the tree, it might have been. You know, it was because because yeah. three you're right. speed with a dog one, leg two, first. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Holy crap! A I, I forgot all about that. Configuration. Um, I finally drove my first four plus three. Remember those? Oh my God! It was, yeah, it was on like the Callaway Twin Turbo Corvette '88 with a four plus was three with the lockout? with the fucking button, or there was just a button. Fuck, that was a good idea. <laughs> Wait, what is a four plus three? So it was a four-speed transmission with a two-speed power glide transmission on the back of it. So you'd go first, second, third, fourth through an H pattern, hit a button, and go back to first. So it was like a semi truck. It's like high low. Yeah. Yeah, Whoa. yeah, I have never heard of this before. Four plus three. Yeah, that was that. That came out when I was at uh, T. A. Byrne Chevrolet in 1986. <laughs> um, That's really weird. <laughs> it was really weird. It's a, the, the, It was bizarre. It was very bizarre. What God? What year? What, did that come out in '86 or was that I after? I think the car I drove was like an '87, maybe. Yeah, or yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, I always thought it was strange. Uh, manual cars that had electronic overdrive. My dad's yeah. P1800 had that. It's like one, two, three, four, and then you hit a button. And suddenly the RPMs go down, and I was just like, yeah. I don't trust this mm. blinker. Because you know, it was, it's a stock, you push it down, and then. Yeah. Um. Like, huh. <laughs> anyway, so I, I, uh, I would be, I beat a lot of Corvette, uh, not Corvettes, I beat uh, some Camaros. Oh, I, in, I'm sorry, in what? In, in, the, in that? In the Buick Century. Bring it up. Yeah, what kind of know. fucking Camaros. <laughs> oh Beats no, terrible I had a Camaros. no, no, no. I, that that, Does that have a real motor. I was it, done, it had a it had a three fifty. Oh, it did. Okay. Huh. Um, I did a little bit of top end work to it and intake uh, and carb. Intake and carb. Yeah, that's and uh, that's like when you're a slow kid and you buy new shoes and you're like, I'm fast because I did the same thing in my Pontiac. No, but, and I was no, but like, really, like it. It was fast enough. I mean, you honestly, it slow kid. Dude, but, we all but ran remember, 15s. If I had two hundred and 20 horsepower in this. It was still more than what a, you know, an off the lot Z28 had. Oh, wow. like an early 80s fucking Z28 yeah. that had like 180 yeah, and nothing. I yeah, crushed yeah. every Guido in <laughs> in uh, Yonkers from except, Guido crush. I mean, there was, it was really, that was an interesting time because it was a time, I, I was talking to somebody about this recently that it's a time before Hondas were fast. Like it's such a weird like there moment there was a moment after that that all of a sudden Hondas were fast and it was like oh okay the world just changed but we like make a film called the day without <laughs> Hondas day without Hondas <laughs> this is it's so funny because like that's the thing about being a little bit older is yeah. that you remember when there were no Hondas that would be a great like <laughs> shoot it like seventies eighties period but it's like a sarcastic comedy of. Yeah, I just put the new intake on. I'm running seventeen one tonight, and it's just like talking shit and all the yeah, specs like are terrible. Yeah, like real serious drag racing mm-hmm. with real accurate times, and they just sound awful. That would sad be, as hell. God, yeah, that would be funny. It because that's broken what, in the sixteens. <laughs> slicks, the slicks did it. And then the end to kind of allude to the the sequel is like a magazine hits the table, and it's like the CRX SI coming. Go, no, the magazine hits the table, and it goes, "The new Corvette will be mid engined." That's <laughs> <laughs> from the seventies. I mean, you know, it's funny because uh, cars were so cheap. 
like I had a friend that had a 68 GTX, Plymouth GTX, with a built 440. Whoa. I think I think it was 2800 bucks or something. <laughs> and that's like, yeah, all right, yeah. I mean, there's adjusted for inflation, but still, that would be no, what? No, it was six grand, five yeah, was grand? Seven that grand, maybe, is, yeah. It's crazy. Cars were, I mean, it was like everybody had like a, you know, um, like a holly carb in their basement that they would just give you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it was yeah. like leftover from just, their hot <laughs> rod days. days. Exactly. Yeah. Was that a 650 CFM double pumper? No, no, not a single bumper. But it's, I mean, it's what, like a, you just did like a, a Tony Clifton. It was yeah. good. Oh, I good? love Tony Clifton. Well, did you watch the Jim Carrey documentary, the Jim and Andy? Or no, I haven't Andy seen it. Jim yet. or whatever mm-hmm. it's called, Jim and Andy. Is it's it basically it? about Jim Carrey method acting Andy Kaufman to like a fucking crazy degree. Like where he is acting like Andy Kaufman to Andy Kaufman's real parents and stuff like that. Oh. It's it's interesting. Okay. It's on Netflix and like. Was it better than Man on the Moon? I did not enjoy that. <laughs> you didn't like Man on the Moon? Not really. Um, I I understand. I mean, that if you didn't like the movie, I don't imagine you'd like the behind the scenes so much. <laughs> <laughs> if you hated the movie, I don't have to tell you. you'll love the BTS. I mean, Jim Carrey's a weird fucking guy. You yeah, know? No, he's yeah. got he's got some interesting world views. Wait, does um, he do Tony Clifton in Man yes. on the Moon? Yeah. Oh. Or does Paul Giamatti do it? No, no, he, he does, does both. It. Okay, yeah, he does both. Does Paul Giamatti play uh, Sme- uh What's the guy's name? Some Bob's Sp- Muda. Bob's Muda. Yeah. 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 The real Bob's Muda is in. No, no, no. Paul Jim, yeah, Paul Jim, he does play Bob Zuno. Sorry, uh, Danny DeVito plays George, uh, the manager, whoever, the, Shapiro, George Shapiro. Oh, not the Animal Steel. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, the late George is. the Animal Steel was a wrestler. Oh, okay. Um, That's okay. Anyway. Got anything else before we get the fuck out of here? It's a hey, long hey, show, hey, son. Hey, is someone, it? Uh, Feels like it is. What's the two? next level for drive? For the drive, for video. Any any news? Oh, any things? Well. Are you, you not want to talk about that? No, it, I you know it's um, we're, we're in some ways we're sort of back to uh, b- back to starting over again, right? So we have to uh, we have to we have to like do the stuff that we did in the last ten years all over again. So um, on one hand, yeah, the, I mean the, the you know the the TV stuff I think is really promising. Uh, I think there's a possibility of doing more. Um, with television, which is sort of weird, because we came up out of internet, and now it's just because of the nature of the business, linear TV is is worth more because it's a smaller, it's kind of a managed, it's like a you know supply and demand, it's like a managed supply, so it's worth more. You go on the internet, and there are a million things, and it all drives the price of advertising down, mm-hmm. whatever. Internet's uh, there's there's a currently a race to the bottom happening right yeah. now, which it's, is why I'm bailing out of YouTube before we actually hit the bottom. I mean that's really sad, right? Yeah. I mean that's like this is where we. I mean, and, and people don't really understand it. They don't care. Like they just want to watch what you they want to watch. And I which is fine. Have both been now part of three races to the bottom. The first was <laughs> the death of print. Yes, for you with zero to sixty. Right, which for me was when I graduated. Uh, college with a degree in photography and film right. and then the DSLR and Craigslist eliminated that right. and then for you it was the, the print magazine and then the, the race to the bottom round two was starting over after next new networks took a shit right. <laughs> and then race right. to the bottom three right now is the, the volume uh, you know the guys who are really cleaning house on YouTube are these unwatchable daily vloggers yeah. that are doing seven days they're doing 365 videos a year and some of them are I try. I tried because uh, there was a reddit thread about what one of them makes and I don't even want to fucking say the person's name yeah, yeah, yeah. or how much it was it was so much money that Doug Demuro called me <laughs> <laughs> when Doug calls you like what? When I hear when the, I hear I don't I love Doug. Hell? When I don't hear from him very often, but when he called when he hit me up and went, Yo, yo, I, I almost fell off my oh. fucking chair when I saw it and I was like, This is the guy who's like smoking me right now, going like, Yeah, can you believe it? Wait a minute, these so vloggers are like making it from YouTube or from doing other YouTube, stuff or from doing, YouTube. They oh. post someone posted a screenshot of their like revenue oh. and it was like their estimate for a month was like fifty G's. Yeah. That's and it was that's just rev share? Yeah. Not partnerships or anything? I mean, if I understood the <sighs> It's doing he's doing daily vlogs and running 
three ads per video and yeah. doing 30 videos. A, so he's getting like a $5 CPM and his videos get 200,000 views. He's doing 30 of them a month. Yeah. I mean, but I couldn't do it. I was talking to Doug. I was like, I, the appeal of that is, you know. Well, and also, I mean, the content they have to make. Like, there are people I like as personalities on YouTube and I like their content, but the content I like from one of their daily videos will be three minutes of the video and they put that in the headline and like mm -hmm. that is what they make the focus of their video. So you go, oh cool, I wanna see this thing. The first 10 minutes are them getting coffee and talking about whatever mm. and did it and then they get to like, you know, the, mm. the workout thing they, that you, they advertise and then the end is like also bullshit. Yeah. So it's just, and they know that the people are there to see the person that they grew to like, but they flesh out the video with a bunch of shit. Yeah. That's a, I mean, that's a good way to describe it because I don't understand any of it. And this is where I think there's there's kind of a generation gap. I don't get watching these guys because I wasn't there, I guess, in the beginning. So I don't, like, you have to really feel like you're part of their scene. Like, I remember, what, I mean, it's like, I. I can say that I remember listening to Howard Stern and going, wow, this is a kind of thing that's happening. And like, I'm, you know, it was sort of cool to be part of this, you know, bunch of guys. Well, that here's, are hanging a, out. here's a here's a Howard Stern question. Then, if speaking of that, if yeah. you would you rather listen to the Howard Stern show as a fan of Howard Stern? Right. Would you rather listen to Howard Stern's show mm -hmm. when he goes to work and is prepared and has guests, celebrity guests and whatever? Or would you rather watch a reality show? about Howard Stern wow. but that he fucking filmed himself with an iPhone. That's exactly that's, exact, that's a good point. Right? Yeah, I would know. I I I like so the, the, I like the content the stuff, that we yeah. like and the content that a lot of my friends like are like like here's a, Jason Fenske, good example. He's been on the show before Engineering Explained. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I his show, he that Jason is the person, Engineering Explained is the show. Yeah. When the show is over, he goes back to Jason being the person. Yeah. And while I like Jason, I don't need to watch a show about Jason doing his daily shit. I want to watch the show about the thing he's good at making he the show about. He puts a lot into making that yeah, show, and, and I yeah. want to watch the Doug thing he put too, a lot and into. Uh, so do us. Yeah. Like, we make the show. Like My life outside the show is boring as fuck. I yeah. cook dinner. I go to the gym. I feed my cats. Like I can't imagine just sitting there like staring at a camera and be like, hey, guys, like today I'm going to the grocery store. You know, <sighs> that's interesting. I mean, I think that there's a sort of credibility that comes from I mean, for for this for the audience we're talking about, there's a credibility that comes from watching somebody live the live the life. Yeah, they and, want that. And they shit. and they think that if you're not living the life, then you're faking it, and that's got that's bad. Like like in other words, when you show up professionally to do something, mm -hmm. it's like you're faking it that day. In other words, if you were living that, okay. and everything you did sort of was part of the video thing that you're shooting like a yeah. real reality thing like that's almost more credible because i had one comment well that's what we tried to do kind of with discovery channel and yeah. history channel it's not and i don't know what's really happening with it it's sort of in just fucking i don't know the ether somewhere where it's the show about me and zach and thad and tom making the show right 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 so i mean that could be cool i think though that one commenter i think explained it the best right and it, it was explained in a way that was directed as an insult, but <laughs> but this is a, but it actually was pretty enlightening. He Go said, fuck your mother. <laughs> what, what we really extrapolate from <laughs> exactly. it. So, uh, like a poetry by, teacher. By fuck, he means... No, what, I, what he said was, and I'm assuming it's a he, um, he said, uh, every time you see an edit, it's an opportunity to lie. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, yeah. And that's why one takes are so appealing. True. To, yeah. to that kind of the, to that kind of mindset, yes. and then I'm thinking, well, fuck, I, you know, we have, like, I, we've worked with some of the best editors that we, you know, that we know, and then and even other guys that are just great editors, and like that's putting the show together with an edit is to me the that's the gig. Yeah, but I don't. But to these guys, to to guys with a particular YouTuber mindset, that like that's. Every time you cut the camera, you're you could be lying. Yeah, there. I heard I heard the same thing with the one takes that that was sort of the appeal of them was yeah. that there was there they they came off as very authentic. Yeah, and I never understood that until that comment happened, and mm -hmm. and so I guess I get it, but I it makes me feel weird because I don't like I don't know I mean lie that's I don't I don't I know just think what it's to weird do with that. for if you're like a quote vlogger like 
there's an air of self-importance about it. Like, right. I need to speak this to my people. Yeah. We're like, yeah, okay, I tweet, sure. I post on Instagram, sure. But, like, I don't know. There's just, yeah. I don't, unless it's, like, about the one topic that you're doing the thing about it, just to me. Well, that's, right, that's the thing. It's like, if I'm excited about a, a topic, and I, or or an, if it's an article, if, and I, if I'm researching it and writing it, it's a big process, but at the end of it, like, I'm bringing you this thing that I spent all this time on. Yeah. Like what I do while I'm doing that doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> like it's not yeah. like if I'm going if what's I'm on the but phone. But what's unfortunate is the value to someone selling advertising against that content yeah. of your thoroughly researched project or me doing a video like the value to an advertiser I have I hate to say it of me doing a one take or you doing a well researched article is probably less. Mm -hmm. Than of this dude or these series of people doing uh, vlog videos with a super engaged audience, and they pull like a nine minute retention or something. Yeah, you know, I, I just, I guess, like, I don't know. Maybe there's so, maybe if Eddie Vedder did one, you know, <laughs> and my fucking hero, right? You know, yeah. But if you know, McLaren Dave one two three. <laughs> you know, like who are you? Right. You yeah. know what I mean. I why know. do I give a fuck? Uh, so, so I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm just old and bitter, and that's why <laughs> not fucking doing volume internet. I, no, videos I think anymore. we we all have pride in what we put out, and there are people that maybe they've just seen the vlog thing as a way to make far more money than they ever dreamed of, and I can't knock that. And they're no, I they're can't playing knock the 50 system. G's a month like no. they, you know, if they if they're like, dude, my audience will watch me brush my hair and talk about it. But I'll they're bringing. That. I mean, I get the. I get the whole allure of bringing. Like they're having an experience. They're sort of bringing you along with it. Like you're. They're buying a car. You. You can't buy a car, so you're watching them, and they're not that, leaving anything the, out. I agree because that's on topic. If you're watching yeah. an automotive person and they do something with a car, yes, it's when I watch like like there's a f uh, fitness dude I follow, but when he is like, I'm gonna build a deck today. I'm like. Sweet, right? I don't, right, right. but but they do, and people do a lot of those, and I think a lot of the car people uh, do that, and they also sometimes have edits in there, right? So there's like there are cut points in that as well. Yeah, so I. Um, it's a weird. It's a constantly changing, strange universe. Yeah, I'm, but but you're to Matt's point. Like my life is totally uninteresting. If I had a camera on me, I mean, it would be the worst show. And like, I, I don't want a camera around and film myself running fucking errands, and there would be people who would watch <laughs> it, but like. You ain't gonna catch me doing that shit. Yeah. That's all. I just can't. I can't find myself interesting enough to go. <laughs> well, I need to turn this camera on and say this shit right now. Like I, I just. I don't find myself that interesting when I'm outside of the one thing that I know how to do. Right. I guess right. It's, it's just the reality TV ingredient. The same people that will watch the Kardashians yeah. go get tires put on their car. Yeah. Will watch another person they like do something that's outside well, their whatever. Do you know what? It's am it's amazing. And I, follow me on this analogy for one second. I'll make it really quick. Eddie Van Halen was my hero as a guitar player, right? And I tried my damnedest to be able to play all the stupid, you know, tapping and all that other shit he used to do. Eddie did a lot of cocaine. Oh, yeah. Right? But 12 and 13 and 14-year-old me did not. So I was learning stuff that he came up with high as fuck, right? And so, right. Okay. So, so, like, I was, like, I didn't have the crutch, but I was able to do it without the cocaine. Where the hell was I going with this? Well, I don't know. So but no, I... but wait a minute. Um, uh, re real reality television in the early days of reality television had a lot of back, uh, a lot of um, production value. A lot of producers were steering the story. There was a lot of editing, a ton of editing actually. So it wasn't really real. What's happened is the people that grew up watching reality TV and assuming it was real have been doing really real versions of that that's better than the produced oh so you're reality. saying they in people in who grew up watching reality tv have now created youtube vlogs that are more authentic exactly than reality television. and better because their model is something that they thought was was done so if they grew up watching survivor which is obviously tons of editing and right. produced and everything and then that's their or, impetus well or not even even you want to go to Something like Big Brother, not even Big Brother. What, what's what was Real the world? TV one? Real World, Real right? World. Real World seemed like it wasn't uh, produced as much as it was, but it was hugely produced. Yeah, I. I do we so not, does everyone not know that? I think I, I no, feel like I know that. No, but but I think that that 
younger than us, people younger than you even, who grew up sort of with that with that sort of... I guess I encounter people all the time that think things that happen on television are real. I, I encounter these people constantly. Right, but when There's they... There's nothing real on television. Right. Nothing. But when they go to do a vlog, right, they're following something that they... You know, that like their, their influence to, to do that thing is... That it's real. That it's real. Yeah. So the thing they're doing is actually real, and it's better than the produced stuff. Got I, I know no, I know, I know, I know your point. You know I saying? know your point. Okay. Here for me anyway. Yeah, I'd rather do something than watch a person that's sort of like me do something. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, sure. I like watching people do things I can't do. Yeah. I don't like watching people do things I can do because right. I'd rather just go do the thing. That's where bad comments come from because people are watching thing. People are watching people do things that they could do, but they're not doing them. Yeah, and so they're just mad and yeah, mad that they. There's could almost be doing nothing it. special about me that has led me to the position that I'm in, besides willingness to do the things to get there. Right. Right. Nothing at all, really. Right. Dude who likes cars. I well, I hope we're in a big, like, evolution of people's behavior with that because we've had these these like feeder tubes of content where we live vicariously by watching people do stuff mm -hmm. like and then at a certain point you i hope people hit a wall and go oh wow i keep taking this in and i'm not fulfilled with what i want to do so i should go drive the thing or build the thing or build the house or whatever the hell it is right instead of watching someone do all the things i like like we grew up watching top gear going oh i wish i, wish I could do that that's awesome oh they're sliding this they're doing this eventually we went outside and figure out how to go kind of chase that thing. Right. And I just think there's probably there's probably going to be generations of turnover that go, oh, I'm watching YouTube, blah, 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 and now I'm fucking bored. And yeah, like every right. few years. I don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, I got I get the kids who I meet who say they're, they're YouTubers who grew up watching our stuff. that are like now, and they graduated from college. They started when they were in high school. Mm -hmm. You know, now they're now they're doing whatever it is that they're doing. And there's even generations of that now. Like there's like the guys who watched us. Like people are watching them and knew the so it's yeah. like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's ha and it's happening faster and faster. Yeah. And and if you're that's what's happening. That the, but the none of these people that are like are they forwarding the medium. You know what I mean? That's that's what I really am. My concern is is are, are they? I mean, like, digital photography has forwarded the medium pretty beyond where film was. Like, it took a while. Yeah. It was shitty, and that no. But like, you know, does yeah okay, vlogging or whatever is authentic, but is it forwarding the medium at all? I, we're not. It's funny. We're not going to know that. We're, somebody's going to emerge, and they're, we're going to go. Oh, they. They changed everything, yeah. and it may not be Shmi, it may not be Vehicle Virgins, it may not be the guys that are. <laughs> but uh, it might, I mean, but later on, <laughs> I mean, somebody is going to be in there that is the top gear of that. We'll see. I, yeah, we'll see. I think we got to call that. That's a good. That's a good way to end that show. I like that. Mike Spinelli, Drive, NBC Sports, The Drive. Yeah. Mike Spin, uh, Mike Spinelli on Instagram. Sure. Mike Spin on Twitter. Mike Spin on Twitter. I seem to. I'm Twitter seems to be my I know you're you're all Instagram and and shit. Uh, but. Instagram is my preferred method of output for social media. Twitter's where I where I shit on Donald Trump mostly. <laughs> yes. Um, I I see is, uh, I seem to do best on Twitter. So it's Mike Mike Spin on Twitter. Mike Spin on Twitter. Right. Thanks for hanging out, homie. You got Enjoy it. Enjoy the Anytime. LA Auto Show. I'm sorry you can't hang out for Radwood. Well, next time. Um that was a good show. I enjoyed that one. That was nice. Nice to see that you. That was nice. Friend. Very good. Oh, very nice. It was very nice. It was very, very nice. Thanks for coming. The Smoking Tire Podcast, powered by Shout Engine. Get your own damn podcast, shoutengine.com. Microphone, computer, thing to say, into the internet. Eventually, you probably want to figure out someone to listen to you. That's the next step. That's the next one to add. Mm -hmm. Find an audience. Find an audience. Now, we can go. Good night.